We're going to talk about some of the Nuxtaku stuff going on. If you don't know who Nuxtaku is, he is the, uh, he's not the PNG. He's a, he's a VTuber that hangs around with some ordinary gamers and Oompaville. And they were doing their some ordinary podcast. Well, not too long ago with all the Ava, Chris Tyson stuff that came out, it got all the Shadman stuff came back to the surface. And in with that, um, Cope and Seed on Twitter, uh, they also do their show on YouTube, had this list that they put out there um, that covered a bunch of stuff. I've also heard it maybe came from Reddit um, that had a list of all these people's interactions on there from Anissa, jo- Joma, uh, Ricky Berwick, and of all people, Nuxtaku was on there. And so this became a big, big kind of deal. Basically, Chud Logic um had some ordinary gamers on the show was talking with them was like so with this stuff with nuxtaku coming out is this the end of the some ordinary podcast and mudahar turns around and says yes but they were ending anyway um it turns out that there was some misinterpretation and different things that happened there um all of that's going to get covered but i wanted to start with a couple short videos by friend of the channel Great dude, uh, Mr. Sen. I've done the interview with Mr. Sen before. <clears throat> He's done three different videos on Nuxtaku. And let me tell you, if there's a guy that knows the Nuxtaku stuff, I'd probably go talk with him because he's been around for a minute. He knows all, a lot of the VTuber and stuff from all the way back in the day with the Weeb Wars and all that stuff. If you don't know what that is, go to the Kiwi Farms. Um, but anyway, uh, so Mr. Sen did a couple of videos. And so... Stemming from all the stuff I just stated, uh, Nuxtaku did a video. And in that video, uh, well, we're going to break that video down. Mr. Sen is, and we're going to commentate on it a little bit. But then Mr. Sen's added a bit more context. And then most recently, just a couple days ago, a dude named Harmful Opinions dropped a Nuxtaku fucking kill shot out of nowhere and is just completely, completely blown this dude's spot up. Uh, I think that both of them, Mr. Sen and Harmful Opinions, both did a great job blowing dude spot up, but uh, just showing how degenerate this fucking guy is. So we're going to hear from both experts on this. Harmful Opinions is actually a guy, I still want to cover his original kind of um, big breakout moment in the community was a couple years ago. He covered this app called Candid that kind of... Uh, kind of was tailored toward the skeptic community. And when I say that, like people that um, are just uh, lesser popular opinions, let's put it that way. Uh, And this app kind of tailored to them is going to be basically like a a social media app for those kinds of people. Well, he exposed it as a big fucking scam and as well as it being an AI training program because Candon was actually owned by some people from like Google and stuff like that. And they ultimately went on to take the data that they collected, turn it against those people and use it to actually train the AI to spot those kind of people and kick them off platforms like Twitter and stuff like that. Right? So it's a big fucking scandal and uh, harmful opinions broke that story wide open. It's really interesting. And it's really kind of weird. Some of the stuff that's happened with that app since then and how it changed hands and things like that. But we're going to start off, like I said, we're going to go with Nuxtaku's response to everything that I just told you, uh, Mr. Sen's coverage of it, and then we'll go from there into some additional information that Mr. Sen put out and then the Harmful Opinions video, and then we'll see where we go from there. Hey everybody, Muda here, and I just wanted to make it as clear as possible, this podcast is not over because of Nux and his situation currently. Now that is a hard backtrack if I've ever heard one. Podcast is done, yeah. Podcast is done now. Yeah, so this is coming off the heels of the Shadman discussion. So it really does look like uh, 
yeah, Shadman stuff happens. Nux caught in the crossfire. Podcast done. Realistically, podcast being done is for completely other reasons, and it is a total coincidence that it's happening at the same time as the Shadman stuff. Again, I don't expect people to believe me because people are taking everything I say out of out of context in the ugliest possible of ways. So uh, I will definitely let Muda doing the talking for me. Like he says over here, nothing to do with our relationship with Nux. Uh, literally nothing to do with it, by the way. But anyway. No, no, by all the times Muda has dodged the epic wall thing about you i think that his word at least in regards to you should be taken with a pinch of salt and i'm gonna show why yo what's up guys so apparently nux taku on his second channel nux and whore made a reply that's supposed to just destroy everybody and, and make sure we all have egg on our face or something let's, let's see the rest of the clip because it is pretty damning i'm not gonna lie uh, i think muda definitely misspoke a little bit here wait what yeah the podcast is over we uh, are not filming the last episode. It's over. Yep. Oh, yep. Nicky, please, please. Are you serious? Are you shut up, up, please. Yeah. We're not doing the podcast anymore. It's done. Why? We're supposed to film on Tuesday. Well, there's a couple reasons for it. A lot of podcasts anymore. Yep. Yep. Pa Sorry about that. I'm going to restart this a little bit because you heard the other video over this. I was I forgot to pull up one other video. So I'm just going to go back a couple times. The podcast is over. We uh, are not filming the last episode. It's over. Yep. Yep. Podcast. Is that are you serious? Yep. Yeah. We're not doing the podcast anymore. It's done. Why? We're supposed to film on Tuesday. Well, there's a couple reasons for it. A lot of that was obviously some of the shad stuff, too, because we were kind of sitting there. We're like, um, me and Caleb, we and we were just like. So this is the initial response that I told you about. So this is Chud Logic stream with Muda talking with Chud uh, and Muda, basically, the way he says stuff here, it sounds like this Shadman stuff that's kind of a stem from the Ava Chris Tyson stuff is why this is all ending and why this is actually over. And you're going to find out this this changes, but uh, it, we're, we're going to come back around to it. I guess it's, I don't know, it's weird. Uh, the other uh, thing there's, there's weird. So, there's so much I wish I could say, ah, but I promised I would not say it yet. Uh, we have, we got to wait, got to wait. Frick, I don't want to say anything and throw anyone else under any buses here with why the podcast is stopping the way it is. Uh, the point is, it's literally all for behind-the-scenes restructuring. It has nothing to do with... Mudahar has gone on to validate this. So he said that it was because they, they as the Some Ordinary Podcast, did not own the production rights. Um, I've got that response. That's what I was pulling up. We'll watch that after we watch the Harmful Opinion stuff. Me and my association with Shadman at all. Zero. Uh, in fact, it's the least to do with me out of the three of us as to why this podcast is stopping right now. It's going on hiatus. Hopefully we will pick up something. We do have a, an epic project plan potentially in the works, which again, not exactly the place to shout out future ventures and stuff, but... Yeah, nothing to do with me. And Muda even says, for context, your podcast is ending for a lot of behind-the-scenes restructuring at the moment. Nothing to do with me. It's purely business and behind-the-scenes shit. This is a 30-minute video. So we'll be going out over, like, every receipt, everything Nux has to offer this Friday on Mr. Sen Tonight. But we're also going to be covering a variety of topics, including Ricada Law. You already know what it is. But yeah, we'll be going over all that. Let's do a quick dissection though a quick one as you know the title of this video is mudahar backtracks on nux taku or backpedals i'm still to be decided on what i wanted to be but now we got muda kind of in the hot seat right i actually like this response because it exposes a lot of people for being stupid one of which being muda the other one being nux and the third one being well the commentary community as a whole but let's start with the commentary community as a whole this uh, story continues to spiral out of control because I see this video on my feed, Nux Taku kicked from some ordinary podcast, absolutely not because of Shadman. And this is a whole train of worms. That's not a real expression, but goddamn crazy situation to, to learn about getting fired from my podcast from some guy's video. To be clear, this is just false information. I was not fired from my podcast. Initially, this agenda was spread by that community. And a content creator that has kind of a bridge built ever since the Mama Max situation with that community is a creator known as Chud Logic, which I personally don't have anything against. The thing that I know Chud most from is defending Lyrix from his lolly controversy because Lyrix didn't want to debate me himself after I found out that he lied a lot. 
So there was that. But other than that, you could say that Chudge pushed the agenda or the misinformation and framed it in a way to where it looked like Muda was kicking Nux to the curb. So L commentary community as per usual. This is what happens when you start orbiting Nicholas the Oreo. You know, shit starts getting a little bad. But whatever, I'm sure the clout will save him. On to somebody else who the clout will save. Well, Nux or Muda? Who do we start with here? I guess Muda. Uh, we'll save Nux for the grand finale. Uh, if you haven't noticed, uh, the weekly podcast, some of the episodes might have been a little bit phoned in. Uh, there was a lot of rambling, so me and Caleb and uh, Nux have basically decided that it's better to restructure the podcast, uh, basically have ownership ourselves, uh, and to the point... So Muda does go on to kind of restate this and recontextualize the argument and apologizes to Chud Logic because... His point that you saw in the beginning that Nux plays in his response, it sounded like Nux was one of the reasons. This is apparently actually the reason. Um, Mudahar did confront Nux Taku about it, about the Shadman stuff, and <clears throat> apparently gave a response that was okay enough that they decided, yeah, we'll continue doing the podcast and we will actually film the last episode, something that he says they were deliberately not doing. So there is a last episode of some ordinary podcast out there now that came out after the discussion with Shred Logic. So a lot of what Mudahar said ended up being backtracked, and it's not a great look for Mudahar. But the stuff that's going to come out is an even worse look. Point of actually Hello. making a set so we do more IR. Hey, Jim, how you doing? I just wanted to slide on. <clears throat> Slide on in here with an update, actually. What's that? Because it happened a couple hours ago, so I don't even think Sen has it in his video. Oh, definitely not, because these videos are about a week old, about maybe two? Yeah, so 11 days. Diorio was on with Chud, mm -hmm. and then Turkey Tom goes on, and they're going over the Harmful Opinions video. Yep, and... I do have that. <sighs> yeah, well, Mudahar goes on later. Yep, yep, I got and that. He's we'll, like... we'll go over some of that. Yeah. Yeah, where he's like, yeah, no, um, if this is as bad as you say, Tom, he's off the show. Yeah, so. yeah, yep. Nope, I do have that, because I, I got Chud's little uh, cutout, little pop-out. It's like 30 minutes long. We're going to listen to it a little bit quicker. Um, but because there is some points we can skip to it, I actually watched it live when he did it. But I do have that coming up that we're going to we're gonna watch after we watch the Harmful Opinions thing, too. Because I do want to watch that. It's a great fucking video. But uh, it was bad. Oh Sen's, my god! Sen's even Sen's even got his own kill shot that I don't know if enough people know about. So I kind of wanted to amplify it, and I figured a great way to introduce Sen's uh, experience with Nux is to show this video first with the bad response from Nux Taku because that kind of all of that stuff has now changed in context anyway that it doesn't matter in my opinion. So like you had the initial conversation with Chud with Mudahar. That got thrown out the window by this video that Mudahar puts out. And then uh, Nuxtaku's response. And then now that's been thrown out the window by all the new shit that happened, especially with Harmful Opinions video. <laughs> yeah. From my perspective, like, looking at it, it really seems like Muda, like, Nux is, like, Muda's friend. And he's just, we're kind of seeing live him sort of come to terms with my friend isn't who I thought he was. Yeah, my friend lied to me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's sort of like this weird, almost uncomfortable, like, reality show, right? Where, like, we get, we're seeing Muda sort of come to terms of, like, wow, okay. I'm going to try to be more interactive in chat tonight because it's not working on stream for you guys. I do apologize. I did want to say that uh, I think it's a new update. Like, I just ran a new update with OBS. It was working fine. And now it's not. So I will get that uh, that resolved for the next stream. But yeah, I, I agree with you, Jim. I, I do think that uh, this, it kind of sucks. It kind of sucks because I don't know if, I don't know if Muda's had to go through this. He did with Mama Max. Yeah. I would say that. I wouldn't but say I, there's I enough time to really, problem. like, yeah, like, because he had a working relationship with Nux Taku. So I, I think he was behind the scenes friends with Max. And I also don't know if there's enough time to know to build up, like, here's how I'm going to character change this going forward. You know what I mean? Like, 
Nuxtaku's already fell within within the wire, within the safeguards, if you want to call it that. Yeah. I, I think Muda's going to have to start, like, making a good hard look on who he associates with. Yeah, and it's not. This, I like, mean, it does. This is, like, the second person he's been close to. And that's not to say, like, I, I am saying, like, Muda's, like, anything like this. But I'm just, you know, it's one of those things where it's, like, this might be a, you know, uh, you might want to examine your circle and you might want to make it a little smaller thing. Yeah. Yeah, I think he's going to have to no matter what. Oh, man. Oh, man. Play. Corel stuff. So a lot of it is really set on, you know, building a set. Uh, I'm flying down to Texas more often, uh, you know, hopefully down the road to be filming IRL and doing the podcast with Caleb. More so like you would see with typical like IRL style podcasts where you can actually do the hosts on camera sitting next to each other. Uh, and one where we don't necessarily even need to have a guest like every week, try to figure out how to get Nux on the entire show, being the fact that he lives in an NFT land and an NFT world, so to get him onto the actual podcast is another uh, challenge itself. So it's really something where we're taking uh, some time to stop the podcast restructure and possibly rebrand it and get the ownership directly under all three of us, uh, you know, which is something we didn't necessarily have with the Some Ordinary podcast. So I hope that clears things up. Uh so Muda over here in the initial interaction with Chud never stops to correct the record at all. In fact, if he did, I'm not sure why the commentary community dipwits on Twitter would post it without any context and just go with it as is. Oh yeah, because they love smearing people and causing a bunch of shit. Like I said, this is exposing a bunch of people and I fucking love it. <laughs> anyway, back to Muda. Nowhere does he ever stop to correct the record at all. It's a little suspicious. In fact, I'll go one step further. It's a little suspicious that Muda says the word Wally in this, and also in the same vein says that there's no way Nux didn't know. So you already know Nux is dabbling with some of that Wally, some of that shit you call anime she pee, right, Muda? Never mind the fact that you follow Reb says Disu, and I've already pointed out how it's weird that you would do that considering Reb has questionable shit on his timeline like all the fucking time that you would consider to be Wally. You know, never mind that fact. But fucking backtracking like this, I mean, let me show you a fucking thumbnail of your bestie over here. Because you seem to have so many good things to say about him and blah 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 blah. And I don't see you give anybody else that charitability that is, uh, you know, possibly da uh, dabbled with this kind of stuff. You know, let me just show you one. Okay, and, and of course I gotta blur it out. I know some weebs out there are gonna be like, this is a nothing burger. So here's something I want to point out. So Mr. Sin does a fantastic job here of pointing out already a couple of the questionable uh, thumbnails. These are thumbnails that are also going to be called into question by Harmful Opinions. Now, Harmful Opinions delivery is a lot, uh, a lot more dry <laughs> than, than Mr. Sin. Mr. Sin's got a great personality. So, and he kind of, obviously, if you know the, the situation with Mr. Sin and the shit that he was called out for, he obviously has a little bit more of a uh, bone to pick uh, with these these people in particular. Um, but yeah, he's just he doesn't like the double standard bullshit. He doesn't believe in the double standard bullshit. He believes you should you should stand up if you're gonna say something, say it whole chested. Don't sit there and suddenly start making conditional arrangements when it's people that you like. And I kind of fucking agree with them. <laughs> um, I mean. If you're going to sit there and totally change uh, your standards because it's somebody that you know, I just, I, I don't know. Are they then your standards still? It just, it, it bothers me particularly, but uh, I just, I'm not one for hypocrisy myself and I, I don't like that. I mean, I feel like if you're going to say an opinion and you're going to take that as fact, stand behind it. Otherwise, be nuanced about it. Don't sit there and say, all lolly is CP when you don't mean that. If you're going to suddenly walk that shit back, like within two minutes, don't even fucking bother saying it. You're wasting my time. You're wasting your audience's time. Everybody's fucking time. And I'm like, all right, but to Muda and to these people that Muda and Nux associate with, this is animated CP. Now, why the hell would you associate with a guy that uses what you call animated CP? As a stump. Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> oh, no. <laughs> can, can we just at least appreciate the fact that out of all of the Hololive English girls, Gur is like the teeny weeny little lolly in the group, and she is by far the most lewd. And she's the most popular. Uh, hmm, hmm. Because let me tell you what that is. That's Gur Gura, my dudes. Gur Gura, for those of you that don't know, you might have heard a certain grifter named Ritney Venti that's been complaining about it, calling it animated CP for the longest time, and it's been all over X, all over Twitter, whatever you want to call it. So I know Muda is not, you know, blinded to that, of course. If he wants to say that there's no way Nux didn't know about Shad's drawings, there's no way you don't know about Nux using these kinds of things, bro. All right? I'm tired of playing nice. I'm tired of giving infinite benefits of the doubt. It's bullshittery, bro. <laughs> it's fucking bullshittery. I think this backtrack was the straw that broke the camel's back, so to speak, because it's so blatant, the backtrack. It is so blatant, and it just lets... Ugh, she just leaves a bad taste in your mouth, especially because of all this stuff where it's like, Muda, you know this already. Stop bullshitting. Stop playing this game. Stop pretending like your friend doesn't dabble in this stuff, which finds the, the brings us to the final person, the final boss in this situation, which would be Nux. Now, apparently, allegedly, Nux this debunked something, uh, how, however that might be. It's kind of hard to debunk intention. Because, like, all we got to go off of is Nux literally saying that he wanted to collab with Shad, and then you just have to kind of take his word for the rest. What we also uncovered is a bunch of fucking, apparently, Nux loving to put Wally on his thumbnails because, lol, why not? It's kind of weird that you would put what you consider to be animated CP in your thumbnails. I guess I could kind of understand why Rev and his fan base were so pissed off at you now because you are a blatant fucking hypocrite at this point. It's very hilarious to see that. Like I said, it points out one of the biggest things that like really rubbed Mr. Sin the wrong way, which is that hypocrisy. So you've got Nuxtaku sitting there with Mudahar saying like kind of casting doubt on this and all the while you have Nuxtaku also fucking going behind Muda's back and others back and using this shit and having it in his content and not just that like actually going out of his way like uh that Gara chick um obviously Mr. Sen's able to like give you some more insight in on it because he comes from the anime side he knows like Gara as far as like the anime stuff goes but there is also Lolly hentai sexual actual shit out there and that's the shit that nux is deciding to fucking pull up from for these fucking thumbnails so it's like it's one thing like you could say the again the benefit of the doubt and sit there and say okay yeah you're using animated children for your thumbnail but he's going out of his way to find the most debaucherous and like nasty lewd hentai type pics to do it with so he's going above again and just just making it just enough so that it can still pass to be in a thumbnail and you're gonna see some of this it's fucking insane no hate homie yeah, we're not friends though. That i'm glad sen pointed out like harmful opinions don't point doesn't point it out as well and it's something that's always bothered me about nux is like if you go to his channel his content is extremely racy yeah like yeah there was he, one he's that I old saw. school mama max racy yeah well there was like one that i saw it was like sending hentai to streamers yeah. and it was just him sending super chats with hentai attached and to me that was like always found i found disturbing it's like why would you just randomly send pornographic images to people you don't know live to fluster them? Yeah. That seems like a weird thing to like, you're almost getting off to it. Like, haha, ha, little Sen trolls, really... right? <laughs> yeah, I'm glad, I'm glad Sen really pointed that out there where like harmful opinions sort of like does it a little bit, but you really kind of see a more uh, sense familiarity with him and like yeah. how awkward it was. Yeah. I didn't really have a problem with Nux for the, for a little bit until I like actually looked at his channel and it's all like how sexual his content is. And it, I find it extremely disturbing. Like it's on the borderline of like, I'm in TOS, but just barely. Yes. Yeah. He really does the bare, he does the most to skirt and make the most racy shit ever. And, like, I thought Rev says Desu is bad. Like, enough. 
And I was like, oh, I don't know, some of this stuff is like a little creepy. Yeah, Nux's stuff is even above and beyond that. And I didn't yeah, know like... much about Nux because like I'm not the guy that's in anime in our group. Like we we know I'm the guy that knows probably the least about the anime shit. And the only reason I know Nux is from some ordinary podcast. And all I can say is that most people, kind of like myself, aren't really a fan of Nux because he's just annoying. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and that's the weird thing too. Like, like Nux is so Nux isn't Tommy C. No, or like Lockout, where it's like maybe some people hate him, but there's also a huge fan base. I've seen very, very little people on that podcast saying that, like, oh, I, I would really be upset if Nux wasn't here. Yeah, it seems like a genuine consensus. It's like, oh, this is like you're here because you're friends with Muna. You like you don't bring anything. Yeah. And it, I've actually seen points where they're like, God, he interrupted every fucking moment where there was a good question. So I was reviewing some stuff with like recently with the, uh, the whole some ordinary podcast. Cause all the times they talked with boogie. Cause I've been looking at boogie. We're going to have a person stream eventually on that fucking dude. But oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, when going through all of that stuff, like even going through the comments, there was people at, at, on one of the interviews. They're like, Jesus Christ would not shut the fuck up and let Boogie answer because these are questions we want to know the answers to. And Nux was like giving him an out every time he talked. And then yeah. Boogie would immediately follow that fucking out. Yeah. And it would basically feed him like the rope to escape from. Yeah. And that's the thing. Like I've known that they've like, there's been people, I think it was, maybe it was, Muda that said it like oh he interrupts a lot because he lives in Israel and like he has a big ping but like <laughs> I, it's one of those things where it's like yeah I would buy that if he wasn't like you said throwing the lifeline yeah yeah I mean there's there's interrupting a lot there's interrupting for comedy and then like what he does just borders on fucking annoying yeah it's it, it, it's hard with I it's hard for me to, like, not be... I'm trying to find a way to not sound so harsh on him. But I, I think it's just... He reminds me of the person that, like, has a lot of famous friends, right? Yeah. And he's just trying to, like... I really want to be, like, like Oompa and Muda. Like, I want to try to bring something to it, but he just doesn't. Yeah. He's a tryhard. I mean... <laughs> yeah. He literally yeah, is know, the definition know, he... of a tryhard. I, I don't think there's anything... Uh, wrong in calling him that i mean you're just uh you're you're calling it what it is yeah and it's really weird too because like i think we you and i we flow well i don't ever get the thing that they he flows with muda or umpa no no like he he doesn't he there's been plenty of times where he'll make a joke and they'll be like ah ha 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 sort <laughs> of like i gotta laugh because i don't want my friend to feel bad but god that was awful yeah Oh, man. And Ellington said the worst part of Nux is he can do really good video essays. He used to do really good video essays. And then he hit like a million views on one of them. And apparently uh, on one of his hentai reviews. And basically it was just been he's been stuck in that shit loop since then. And yeah, so and that's... go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no. Basically, like, no, that's a good point. Like he used to make actual decent content and then he became that edgelord. Yeah, yeah, and it's like, I don't know, I, I, I find that kind of shit grifty. Like, yeah, I, you know, I could have continued on forever and ever 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 doing fucking Lyle Convoy content. That shit was hitting fantastic on my channel. I just couldn't fucking bring myself to do it. How many times could I listen to a man sit in a Walmart and yell at a retarded person? Right. <laughs> and, and I mean, there's there's some things too, right? Like yeah. you know, I make edgy jokes, like I'll make the the Hitler jokes and shit like that. But like it, it Nux just doesn't have like decent timing, or like no. he can't read the room. No, like Muda and and Umpavel, like that's not really the place to make like. Yeah, uh, he's like, ha ha, ha right what? guys, right, 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 and they're like, yeah, Nux, ha ha. Funny. Yeah, I do. <laughs> I love fucking dogs. Don't you, Muda? And like, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Oh, you dogs, fuck dogs? Whatever. Ha ha, Muda. Ha ha, ha ha. <laughs> yeah, yeah, basically. And like, yeah, it just feels like he's trying so hard. And... <laughs> like, it's just one of those, like, man, I get it. I get it. I get it. You're the zoomer of the bunch. But like, 
I don't know, like the read the room statement that you said is probably the best. He can't read the room. And it's like, no, dude, we're talking about animal abuse here. Maybe don't talk about fucking dogs. Like, <laughs> right? Well, he just seems like he's like, and I, I know we use this term on the internet very loosely, but I'm, I mean it like wholeheartedly here. He seems really autistic. Yeah. Like he just Maybe. doesn't get social cues. He just does not understand. I don't know. That's not it, a it could be. But... It, it could be. It could be. I just uh, sometimes I find it so hard to believe because like if you if you can read enough to know what's good for making you money, I find it hard for you not to be able to read like a social cue with your friends. Like I feel well, like the one's harder to interpret than the other. Well, it depends. Like my kid's autistic and he doesn't understand like, you know, when to behave or like saying something that might hurt someone's feelings. But he understands, like, at seven, he built a functional sewer system out of Legos. He just could be, like, really smart at, oh, this is analytical data. Says, I did good. I should keep doing this. But he doesn't understand in a social setting. Okay. You know what I mean? He might just, like, be very, very, like, um, like a high-functioning, like, autistic, where, like... Yeah. He's very good at reading data and spreadsheets and power, like, you know, see, oh, analytic go up. What yeah. did I do? Oh, and analyzing that. But he doesn't understand what he's doing is not socially <laughs> acceptable. He just see analytic go up. <laughs> like, did got me on this one. He's a chip. He uh -oh. made his living off of anime videos. Of course he's autistic. <laughs> Honey, well, there you go. He backs my point. So, play Jim. <laughs> oh, shit. Thank you for the assist. The there. So, and I gotta call it like it is. How are you gonna call this shit animated CP and say it's for predators or pedos or whatever, and then just literally use that same shit on your fucking thumbnails, you fucking hypocritical scumbag. Oh, it's so fucking blatant too, it's disgusting. You can see why people dislike this guy. Uh, but he is so charismatic. I can see why he entices Indian tech support like Muda and makes him overlook his Wally. I don't know, it's just so fucking stupid all around. Anyway, that's a quick condensed version of the thing. Commentary community is bad at fucking presenting something factual, which is probably why they try so fucking hard to give themselves credibility. And again, all you gotta do is like see a couple Diorial treats to see how hard he tries to be credible and how hard he tries to push his little friends to be credible too. Like the worst kind of fucking journalism ever. And then Muda, who we know at this point is gonna fucking clearly be lying about not know. Like, it's so fucking stupid, right? It's so dumb that you continue to call Lolly. Wally, I'm sorry. I can't say that magic word on YouTube because I don't know. Wonder why that could be. Hmm. But it's kind of dumb for you to call, continue to call Wally animated CP when you associate with Nux when you know Nux make these thumbnails, when you know Nux has known what Shad made? I don't know. It just doesn't make sense. Hi Muda, give him the hypocrite award too, okay? Oh my god, and Nux. What does he call himself? The serial flex offender or whatever? Keep on the charisma because that's the only thing saving you in this landscape. You know, being loud and boisterous and quirky and cool or something. It's weird. This entire situation is <laughs> weird. Nux really does come off fake as shit though, especially with the Wally -E bullshit. You can't be a VTuber, you can't be in the anime community and not come across this type of artwork, my dude. Yeah. <laughs> oh no. Uh, can, can we just at least appreciate the fact that out of all of the Hololive English girls, Gur is like the teeny weeny little lolly in the group and she is by far the most lewd. And she's the most popular. Uh, hmm, hmm. Oh, man. All right. So I'm going to jump right into the next one. The next one's apparently a lot more, uh, a lot deeper of a cut. Let's just put it that way at Nux. Um, this has some stuff that, like, I didn't even know about in it and everything else. How does somebody look at this and get turned on by it? Oh, Nux, Nux, Nux. Nux will find a way.
So the discourse has become rather weird for this whole thing. I covered why it started in the first place and how it was funny that Rev ended up catching a W out of this entire thing when it initially looked like Nux was winning. Since then, people have said that Reb decided to squash the beef with Nux, so they're cool now or something. So I guess the Reb says Disu slash Nux Taku bridge has been rebuilt question mark. Not that I would know because I don't cover these people on a regular basis. Not really enticed by their lives, so to speak. Plus knowing Reb, he probably said it in a throwaway stream, so hey. But regardless of that fact, it doesn't change the fact, once again, that Reb says Disu ended up taking the W as opposed to Nuxtaku in the grand scheme of things. The big picture, if you will. And Nux, Nux stocks have gone down, sort of a trajectory down. And to add more proof to this, I'm about to bring up this story. Although, this could be the saving grace Nux needs, or needed, or needs, whatever have you. The gist of it, and... The main criticism seems to be that Nux Taku makes all these weird videos, like sometimes borderline prana graphic videos or Rule 34, whatever. And he also likes to go ahead and kind of um, make the title seem like they're collabing or they're an item or something, and it's really freaking weird. Like, don't get me wrong, this is weird. Okay, I would say that's kind of fucking weird. I'm not going to lie. Like, making a title and a thumbnail that clickbaity, like, those were pretty Jaden Animations that I found out we. So, uh, uh, Jaden Animations teaches me about F. Jaden Animation teaches me how. So, it's like, I don't know. I, 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 that makes it sound like you've got a bigger collab going on than you actually do and the thumbnail is also alluding to that fact so it's like really fucking clickbaity i don't know i'm not a fan of that i think that's just weird like that would be like me sitting there saying like oh muda and ahar and i talked finance and like it's just me like going over one of mudahar's videos about like some financial crime that he exposed i mean technically you would be you'd be re you'd be reacting and talking about it so <laughs> But yeah. it's like really, it's a really, really poor semantic. Like, yeah, technically you're not wrong, but like, I, 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 don't I, know. I couldn't grip that hard. Like, I, I mean, I, I go over the top of my reactions sometimes purposely, but that's about where I draw the fucking line. <laughs> I, I couldn't sell that hard because I feel like it's too fucking fake. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's not your, that's not the type of uh stuff your audience does his i kind of see it you know what i yeah. mean like but like it's weird because like just like rule 34 and stuff like that like if you look at that like Jaden like has come out and said like no i'm actually uncomfortable with the rule 34 about me i wish people would stop but they aren't so i'm going to address it once and then that's it yeah because he knows that like strife sand effect yeah keep feeding into like, it yeah but it's uh, yeah. you gave your position and that's it. And then you got this guy on the opposite side of it, like, obs it's almost obsessive. Yeah, like I it mean, comes across as almost sex bestie. Yeah, an item or something, and it's really freaking weird. Like, don't get me wrong, this is weird, but this isn't like Shadman levels of weird, right? It's not like Nux is doing this with Gurgura. Oh wait, no, he he is. <laughs> Which I know some weebs that are like, that's not weird, but like to other people that Nux is associated with in the past, such as Mudahar, that would just be unacceptable. Fun fact, I realized that Nux had also had thumbnails that some would call Wally around for the hottest minute. So once again, just to not throw shade, but just be the realist in the room as per usual, Mudahar, I don't really by the fact that you actually hate Wally as much as you do if you were willing to associate with fucking Nux who has used these thumbnails repeatedly time and time again on his channel. And just like you're gonna say that, oh, it's uh, to, to think that Nux didn't know about Shad's drawings is ridiculous or whatever the hell you said, not giving him the benefit of the doubt. Why should anybody give you the benefit of the doubt? Yeah, there's no way you didn't know that Nux was using Wally in his thumbnails. You know, the stuff that you consider animated CP. <laughs> 
I'm sorry. I, I know it sounds like I'm throwing shade, but again, like I'm the realist in the room, so I gotta I gotta call it like I see it, man. Even if I think you're a nice guy, it's bullshittery. It's always been bullshittery. But that little rant aside on Muda, it's not about Muda. It's about the discourse between Jaden Animations and Nux, apparently. At least that's what people have been trying to make it. So I wanted to go ahead and read this. Nobody talks about how this dude has a genuinely weird obsession with Jaden Animations. Besides having uploaded videos where he talks about Rule 34 of her, for some reason he reacts to likes all of her videos entitled and likes their best friends and <laughs> Basically, they're saying exactly what I said before. Like, Nux is doing these weird fucking thumbnails, which essentially make it seem and the titles which make it seem like him and Jaden animations are either a thing or they're doing some weird collab or something when they do not appear at all it's kind of sad really more than weird and creepy as people are trying to put it it's more sad that Nux Taku of all people is struggling this hard to try to get a collaboration from them or get their attention assuming they're not friends or anything because if they were friends or had the rub or anything of that sort you would think that they would actually do legitimate collabs rather than Nux Taku just making a bunch of clickbait weird thumbnails where he acts as if they're together it's kind of weird again it's like having an imaginary friend or something or pretending like you're friends with somebody when you're really not and that's how it comes off for this entire thing so overall it's not really that big of a deal i don't know why people are bringing it up as it is some people are going way over the top with it like they're trying to act like Jaden animations was s8 if that's even possible by nux or like Jaden Animation's um, avatar was essayed by Nux Top. Okay, I find that a little hard to grasp in my mind. I, I, all right, like I can genuinely understand, and I, I'm gonna leave it at understand. I can understand the whole like <laughs> having your original character and it meaning something to you, but to sit there and say that there can be sex crimes committed against your OC is kind of fucking weird to me. <laughs> I mean it's it's hard to say, right? Because yeah. if I am looking at it like, you know, if somebody is drawing like, you know, art of your character which is a representation of you, this isn't like like this is essentially an animated Jew. Like Yeah. It it it's a little different than if it was like, oh, this is my, this is my furry avatar. Like, that's supposed to be Jaden just as a cartoon. It's like her as art, but like still her. It's not like a persona, it's her. Yeah. And I can see it feeling, I don't, and I think it depends on like, what you mean by like sex crimes. Like, no, it can't be like rape. But I think that if you're, <laughs> I think it's if you're spamming her inbox with pictures of her character being, like, you know, taken advantage of by yours, I can see that crossing a line into uncomfortability. Yeah, that uh, okay, okay, okay. Qualify if, if you're, on that statement, you know what I mean? Like, Yeah, if you're, if you're spamming them with stuff, I mean, even if you fucking just sent it, like, a couple times, like, I, I could guess, yeah... Because that's insinuating something. It's insinuating something you want on your side. Yeah, yeah it is parasocial as fuck, Ellington. <laughs> yeah, and I think that's basically the the issue, right? Like, yeah, is it not? It's not like you know, oh, you send somebody a picture of like, you know, Nox sends her a picture of their characters being intimate. That's not saying like, oh, I raped you, but I can see it being like. I don't like that, and that makes me uncomfortable, and I feel a little icky. Yeah, especially if you're like, you're like, hey, no, and they keep doing it. Ah, uh, yeah, it yeah. Could, yeah it I could mean, be you convey, sexual harassment. You're conveying a message at the very least. Well, I I could like, get on board with that. Like, imagine if somebody came walked up to you and be like, "Oh, I want to grab your dick." You'd be like, that's a little, <laughs> I feel a little uncomfortable and you almost feel like a little bit violated. I, I don't think that that's out of line to be like, yeah, that might be like a mild version of sexual harassment. Yeah, I guess I just viewed it as like, okay, like I've got my astronaut dude. If somebody drew my astronaut dude bent over a table getting railed, 
I'm probably going to laugh at it, but I guess that's just me. <laughs> I'm not attached Wait. to that. <laughs> well, yeah, but also your but astronaut it's... dude isn't a personification of you. Yeah. No, imagine, you had, imagine if you had like an animated picture of you. Yeah. And then somebody drew that and that's like, oh, that's actually me. That's not my... I can see why somebody would feel uncomfortable. No, I'm not saying that like that's a rape or anything, but I can see somebody being like, "Oh, no, I don't, I don't feel good about that," you know? Yeah, like, yeah. Oh man, Taku's avatar because it didn't ask for consent to be in a thumbnail or some shit. Like that's fucking stupid. Like you understand, it's fucking stupid to even bring this up. But I shit you not, people are actually bringing this up. Like if I was Nux Taku, I'd probably use this and how ridiculous this entire thing is. Because out of all the cancellation attempts that have been tried against, and this is probably the stupidest one. And realistically, if Nux never went on the anti Wally brigade, he probably would have been fine even if he had one interaction with Shadman and was a liar because hey, spoiler alert, a lot of e-celebs are fucking liars. Even like the, the, the cleanest people out there have their flaws. And again, as I mentioned before, Charlie Mudahar. I'm sure they're not evil, malicious people, but fuck, their flaws are right there. And people will just... I will say that Sen does bring up a really good point on this too. I, I don't understand this, like people thinking that like, like creators can be flawless because like it goes back to um even something i was watching with turkey time he's talked about it a couple times he's like you have no idea who any of us are genuinely like the stuff that we show you is a portrayal of us like now mind you like i know that i can honestly tell you my portrayal of me is my honest opinions and like it's very 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 close like probably 95 percent or better of who i am genuinely as a person um, but like, it's not to say that like everybody is that way is, is Charlie that way behind the scenes. I mean, from the shit that I found about Boogie, like the shit that I'm finding goes to say that like everything you know about him is very much not how he is behind the scenes. And he's like the worst of it. He's actually worse. So what he's showing you is actually the good dude side of shit. So I, I don't know. I just, I think people, especially people in the audience do need to keep that in mind is that not everybody is flawless. Like you, I can be honest with myself and tell you like, yes, 95% of me is what I'm showing you. But like, and then like, yeah, there are times where I'm going to act it up. I'm going to ham it up just because like, I know it's funny. I know like if I was watching it, it'd be funny. But like, there are people that are even more disingenuous than that. Don't just trust something. Don't think that because they they look and sound like a good person that they are. Like, don't get suckered by that. Yeah, and, and I think some, like, you know, I'm going to make, like, a wrestling reference here, but some people are, like, a CM Punk where their character is close to reality and other people are, like, Bray Wyatt, Bo Dallas, or Nikki Cross where they're character actors. Yeah. Like, um, you know, not every, not every um, content creator is them. No. Sometimes it's a persona. Sometimes it's a stage presence. Yeah. And uh, I just, I want to make sure that that, I, I kind of wanted to take a second to point that out. Because, like, you're going to very much see the next Haku that he's presenting here, even to his friends, is not what he's representing on his own channel. And, like, when we get to the harmful opinion thing, which is next, that's really going to stand out disregard them and again it's like nux's biggest thing is like a hypocrisy argument at the end of the day because i didn't see a single person be that outspoken at least an influencer with any influence be outspoken about how it's deplorable that nux taku has wally in his thumbnails or how nux taku is a certified pedophile or anything of that sort Again, this all just kind of kicked off from the whole Shadman interaction and it just snowballed from there. Nux's lies and deflections through this entire thing didn't exactly help. I don't know if he just completely forgot, but he shouldn't have been making definitive statements if he did. Because he should have known, as a 1 million YouTuber especially, every little thing is going to be used against you. You should know better than this, Nux. How long have you been doing this shit? 
like I asked in the previous video, that you just get too hot for your bridges, that you start sniffing, inhaling those fumes way too much to where you thought you were indestructible. Um, it seems like that is the case. Now you got a nice little harsh reality check. But still, as of now, Nuxtaku, I don't believe, has responded to any of this shit. He said he was going to in the next stream or something, so whenever that happens to pop up, we're gonna go ahead and take a look at his response there. But as of now, the Jaden animation and Nuxtaku, or rather the Jaden animation fetish that Nuxtaku has is just kind of weird, and it's a nothing burger. If anything, you can call it desperate, but not creepy. Like... Maybe you could call it a little creepy because it is, it is exactly like Nux pretending to have a friend in this person, but not having a friend in this person. At least that's what it seems like. They call it weird, but it's not like SA or anything of that sort. I don't know why people were starting to push that narrative. It's so fucking stupid. Are you only going to make Nux look redeemable? Like, I'm going to tell you for your cause, you're just, you're not helping. You're going to make him look redeemable. You're going to make him look like he's within reason. And I don't think that's what you guys want at this point in time. I think you want him to keep spurging out and acting like he does, he's a fucking buffoon, basically. Because that's pretty much we got him in a hot seat and if you want to find out what in more detail go ahead and look at the latest video it should appear as a little box right here the little eye above my head as well or the eye at the top right whatever you get it go to the last video figure out you'll get a nice little tldr of the situation but until next time guys i will see y'all in the next video have a good rest of your day all right, so that's Mr. Sen's two videos that I kind of wanted to show you. Uh, he does have a third video I recommend going and checking out uh, that talks more about the Revs' Desu stuff. I don't know enough about the Revs' Desu side of this, so I would recommend hearing it from him uh, in totality. And I know he is actually looking into the Harmful Opinions video, which is what we're going to watch next. So um, this video has kind of really taken off for Harmful. I like Harmful. I've watched him on and off a lot uh his live streams they're kind of on the dry side they remind me of like more of the pole side of things um but that's just because of harmful and who he is but he is very black and white call shit out call it like it is and i do like that so a couple days ago he puts out this video i hate nux taku and um he's gonna break down nux taku in a way that has not been done aside from some of the stuff that you saw mr sen now mr sen's like hey i don't know why nobody's calling this stuff out and that was a couple days ago uh and now a few days after that we get this video from harmful opinions harmful has obviously a little bit more pull with the popular crew uh especially like chud logic um nick diorio and people like that so this video is real is really getting eyes on stuff like i know turkey tom is going to talk about in the video we'll watch after this watching this video his thoughts and opinions on it um and it's enough that they push mudahar to go watch this that like he does a pretty fucking good job of covering um nuxtaku in a very biased and unbiased way he goes in with obviously a a dislike for him but he's going to show you why i dislike him and show you through his own words through nux's own words why he dislikes it and i think That's it's one pretty, of my pretty favorite good. strategy too yeah is yeah. when like you come in with a bias but you explain why you have the bias yes and then you lay it out which creates that so there's like this oh yeah no i definitely share your bias now too like yeah yeah, yeah i'm definitely a big fan of like when somebody is when somebody uses their own words against them, it's like, well, no, you put this out there in the public, kind of like the dog pack stuff that we'll get into later. Like when you take that stuff that is out there and known and use it to take them down, I, there's something about that that I just genuinely like. Like it just, it, it ticks a box for me. I don't know. <laughs> Commentary judo. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it kind of is in a way. <laughs> uh, but we'll play this video. Oh, hey, look at that. It would, it would help if I played the video with sound. We're going to play the video now with sound. That was, that was just the test to make sure the sound wasn't working. 
Following the Chris Tyson drama explosion, which included people taking issue with Chris's association with, and apparent fandom of, an artist called Shadman, many people were quick to call out those who were outraged for perceived double standards. It wasn't just Chris, they said. Many people associated with Shadman and propagated his work, a portfolio which most iniquitously includes pornographic cartoons depicting Keemstar's daughter. Why aren't all these other people being hounded? It was asked. The expectation, presumably, was that everyone simply hates trans people and would ignore this criticism of their Chris hate because they don't truly care, it's just something they can use as a weapon against an LGBTQ individual. However, in actuality, lists were made of collaborators, associates, and supporters of Shadman. Reasons for inclusion on such lists ranged from merely tweeting at him to supporting his art financially or even using it in their own creations. Some of those on these lists caught less flack, and some caught more for various reasons you can imagine. One individual who certainly feels he caught more flack than was due is the VTuber called Nux Taku. And it seems Nux Taku had private conversations with Shadman throughout 2021. Curious! Curious! 1.3 million views, 200,000, 100,000, 100,000, 100,000. The point that I'm trying to make here is for some reason, for some reason, I became the goddamn enemy numero uno <laughs> when it comes to this freaking bullshit. I will quickly say, based solely on the content... I don't like how he sits there and he tries to pass out. Like, I was enemy number one. No, you weren't. You weren't... I think Ricky Berwick kind of caught it hard before Nuxtaku. Nuxtaku was probably, like, the fourth or fifth person in line when I saw shit because uh, Nisa caught shit. Um... Like I Elvis said, the alien. Elvis got a the huge alien. Of yeah, he was he's chased all, off the fucking. Yeah, he was chased yeah, off the he... fucking platform. Like, uh, <laughs> and fucking Ricky Berwick had to sit there and answer for shit. So, like, yeah, he was like the fourth fucking person. And so it's like yeah. hey, you weren't enemy number one. You're enemy number one maybe at that moment, and that's because of your affiliation. You're affiliated with Mudahar, the guy who takes down people who do does bad things. Like. He's only gone after people that do bad things. The completionist, um, Keffels, um, I mean, Keffles, also, that would, yeah, that's like, if you count cat, uh, cat boy ranch, that like is almost like in that same wheelhouse of yeah. like inappropriate sexual behavior. Yes. Like, and like, so he's gone after several different people. I mean, I can't even think of all this stuff. I've watched a couple different videos from him where he's even gone after like different games, um different like subscribe services and just all, all sorts of anything that's like t trying to take advantage of you on the platform or that's a really interesting topic that has that kind of scammy spin to it i think he's even talked about like logan paul and the coffeezilla stuff recently and everything else so yeah you're affiliated with that fucking dude and you're on the list you're on the epstein island list of fucking chad man like <laughs> <laughs> you're in the you're in the log book bro yeah like, you're gonna get called out <laughs> like are you really you surprised on the lolita express what do you expect <laughs> the lolita like, express. <laughs> no that was the actual plane name did you know that yeah i did <laughs> but like, that's, that's funny so, how the fuck do you, does no one look at that and be like oh the lolita express the pedophile island no that's cool <laughs> Like, what the fuck? Like, how, like, Jesus Christ. Oh, my God. And then, like, we have the 2D version of it right here. Like, yeah. Oh, Flat man. Epstein. I'm just going to call him Flat Epstein from now <laughs> Flat on. Flat Epstein. <laughs> to this freaking bullshit. I will quickly say, based solely on the content of the video in that tweet, <laughs> his involvement with Shadman would seem relatively minor. Uh, no pun intended. It's a newer clip of not. <laughs> so, okay. So, uh, Harmful is going to go into, like, I think he shows the logs, if I remember correctly here, of what Nuxtaku said. And so, again, to kind of brush up on what I already said earlier, Nuxtaku talked about wanting to collab with Shadman. Now, eventually, you're going to see other facets of interaction come up with Shadman, as well as other facets come up related to stuff that just Nuxtaku did on his own. 
So, Fox calling him a Nazi-ish, pedo-ish guy, alongside older <coughs> clips sharing that he's received DMs from Shadman. I myself, even, would certainly speak with a freak, especially if they say weirdo stuff that entertains me, and that doesn't suggest a mutually respectful relationship. Fine. So far. Less comfortable a piece of evidence, though, for many, is that Nux Taku once requested to collab with Shadman, presumably for a video. This is gonna be fun. I like this one a lot. Someone tags me, probably this guy. I have no, I don't remember what this was about. Shadman says, a bit too middle school. I say, wanna collab? He says, Lamau, no, but your heart's in the right place. I say, understandable, have a nice day. I'm here when you come around. This information was amplified to a large audience by Keemstar, but Nux Taku had an explanation. People are making this as some sort of, um, I am supporting him and I'm trying my best to become friends with Shadman, this monster. Which is fucking stupid if you know my content at all. I troll confront people when I collab the same way you do, talking to Keemstar, on LOLCAT. This blows up in his face immensely. And I will say, it's kind of funny. The person who calls him out, the person who gets him to, like, commit here, it's kind of funny. And it's just also funny if you look around things. So, first of all, in the direct perimeter on your screen, you have Gator. Gator, who is who was associated with Ethan Ralph, who's now gone on to be his own sort of YouTuber, and who has also been caught up in several controversies surrounding Lolly and just hentai and all sorts of fucking degenerate shit, is, and he was is replying to Nux. <laughs> He was also friends with Flamenco. Yes. And, and yep. tried to back him during the the lolly incident with Flamenco, the Shotokan, the great Shotokan incident yeah. of 2023. Yeah. I, I, was that last year, actually, or was that this year? No. The Shotokan stuff? Yeah, the Boy Soprano shit. Was that? I want to say it was 2022 or 2021. Like when it actually well, came out, or are you talking about like when Gator kind of supported him? When he supported him, it started a bit last year, if you were watching okay. the right places. Okay, so yeah, it would have been the great show to con of 2023 then. Okay. <laughs> uh, just for the sake of the joke, I want accuracy. Okay. <laughs> but like, uh, yeah, it's just kind of funny. So you have Gator responding to Nuxtaku, and then... The person that calls him out here, I think it's fucking funny, especially because we started with Mr. Sen videos, and there's going to be a lovely little tie in here. And if you watch my videos, you know that. I don't mind if you hate me, but at least hate me for the right reasons. Ah, so it would have been a confrontation. He would have owned Shadman. Nux further clarifies. I am going to prove the point of my troll confront people shtick. Okay, so let me let me pull up my original tweet where I covered this because I did in fact mention this over here. So I say people saying I'm a liar because of these tweets. Aside from not knowing the extent of his shit, then meaning I didn't know about the Keemstar daughter sh shit. I'd collab. I'd collab with all kinds of. I don't know how you didn't know about that and were creating content around this time. I was a viewer. I was somebody in the audience. I knew about this shit, and I wasn't even as involved in the community as I would be in later years. Like, I literally was just casually viewing, heard about this stuff, and knew. You would have to be, like, completely, like, outside of the community. Like, he would have had to have been, like, just completely in the anime community, not talking to anyone tangentially. Yeah, and I like... mean, it was enough that, like, and you can vouch for this, Jim. Like, when all this stuff first broke, I'm like, wait a minute, didn't we already expose this shit? Yeah. I, I was like, wasn't yeah, no. wasn't this the thing that was already, like, brought up and put out there? Like, the whole Ava yeah, Chris Tyson stuff? blank about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because you're like, were you around then? It's like, yeah, no, it was, it was, I, cause I was, like, around 2016 and shit. And I yeah. even remember it, like, because I wasn't even in commentary. I was more sector and even made its way to the kill stream. Yeah. So it's like, unless if you were heavily, 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 heavily isolated, like, you would have at least heard it from somewhere through someone through something. Yeah, like, it, it was covered so much, and, like, I even remember, like, Mudahar having to, like, talk about, like, everybody talked about it, Nick DiOrio talked about it, and all that stuff. Like, it was one of those, like, oh, no, this is not good. Um, I'm sure like you could probably go back and find some of the older Turkey Tom videos and stuff even on it. Like, I uh, it, it it was such a known big deal, especially when it came to the Keemstar daughter stuff, because that was like, 
a big cross the fucking line, and Keem went scorched fucking earth at that time. Well, I'll even argue that there was even a worse thing that he would have definitely have heard of. Which is? Daphne Keen. Yeah. She was... Her publicist DMCA'd that website. She That was in actual papers on news reports that this that Shadman drew a sexualized image of this minor actress and that she saw it and it traumatized her. Yep. It made national headlines. It yep. was actually international. I've seen shit from the dot from websites like dot C dot UK dot FR yeah. like Well and there like, was also so, stuff with Trump around that time too. Like, I I remember that coming out and it's like, dude, how bad is this fucking guy? And like, some of it, I was like, what the fuck? Like, I I genuinely, I just didn't, I was surprised that like this stuff was on Twitter and like my account, like, it's funny. If you look at my account, my account goes back to like 2014, but I wasn't on Twitter until like literally last year. (laughs) So like, uh, by all means, I should have seen this stuff on Twitter, but I was like, what the fuck is going on on Twitter? (laughs) Yeah, so it's like, I don't buy that. Even if he didn't see the Keemstar daughter thing, the fact that, like, he literally drew this picture of this actress to the point where it violated her and she actually stopped acting for a bit. Yeah. Because of Shadman. Like, that alone, like, even if you ignored Keemstar, you would have seen something about Daphne and just be like, that's not cool. Like, and that alone. Yeah, I don't like there was so many facets to this and like that's where I was like, oh, they they chased this guy off the Internet. And then ultimately I heard that he like went to jail or some shit. I was like, oh, okay, problem resolved. And like and then here it is like fucking years later, it comes up again. I'm like, wait a minute. Wait, are we really moralizing over the shit that already has been solved here? And then it's obviously differed a lot since then, but. Um, well, yeah, and it also comes out that like he went to jail for assault, and not the actual pornographic images and shit. Like, yeah, so it had nothing to do with it. So then th- there's that level of, oh, yeah, well, that's kind of disappointing. Like, oh man. Scum. Most of my collabs are trolling, and I was gonna grill him. I'd interview EDP. I never commissioned, promoted, been friends with him. Okay, you could easily imagine someone getting EDP onto a call to treat as a punching bag. Although. Perhaps simply imagining things isn't enough, and it certainly wasn't enough for the YouTuber, Lerix. Lerix, commentary YouTuber fellow, says, Good faith question, hoping you could clarify. This is huge, because most- So this is kind of funny, because again, you know, going back, if you know anything about Lerix, you know about all of his exposés with Lolly and shit like that. So it's kind of funny, because when I was watching this go down on Twitter, I was like, oh, this could get really interesting really quick. <laughs> because this guy was exposed with fucking shit with Salvo, who he's also kind of half ass working with now again. Um, with shit with Tipster, who's had his own fucking lolly controversies. Uh, it's just kind of fucking funny. Like, all of the lolly people were around Nux, but he was oblivious to it. <laughs> He's like, yeah. no, look at all these great people coming out to support me. <laughs> right. Well, we know that Tipster is the veteran, like a veteran general of the Lolly Wars. Yeah. Like <laughs> The only thing he didn't have was Tipster sitting there going, no, Nux is a great dude. Cheers, my dude. <laughs> He's the best 2D image. <laughs> I personally, I personally chaperone Nux is talking with Shadman, and I can tell you nothing bad happened there, my dude. <laughs> <laughs> my God, we all cracked open Bud Light, and because we all have a healthy relationship with Lollicon and alcohol. <laughs> yes, <laughs> only healthy relationships here, bro. <laughs> By the way, I was I was mocking Tipster. Don't quote me on that. As it was me. <laughs> I just realized that I was taken out of context so heavily. Oh God! If you get taken out of context for that, there's so many things worse that I've said that could be I taken mean, out of context. Worse. Reading <laughs> shit. <laughs> Like last week with the Nazi. Joke. I was just like, about to say we still have several hours till we hit hit Hitler hour. <laughs> damn it! I don't. 
those questions, not at all good faith. So you didn't know the extent of his shit then, but you were going to grill him at the same time. If you did get that collab, what would you grill Shad on? From what I remember, he was known as the guy who drew minor sexually. You didn't know that? The rare good faith question. I knew about the lolly stuff and some of his art, like the bestiality with fictional children, etc. Definitely enough to grill the guy. Holy shit, there is so much more. Like, it, there is so much more than just that. That is the worst, and that would have been the hard cutoff for me to not even respond to the guy, probably. But I legitimately was gonna grill the guy. If you've seen my collabs, I didn't know about Keemstar's daughter, although that's the less important part of my tweet. Collabs are not promotions or condonement in any way on my channel. He would have bullied him crushed his soul over lowly bestiality. I should disclose to you at this point, dear viewer, the fact that I have a little bird sitting on my shoulder who goes by the name Nicandros and is a regular in my Twitch chat. He showed me some things, and because of that, this is where I start to feel a niggling doubt. For instance, I mean, he did specify clearly Child bestiality is what he has an issue with, so it's not the same, but goddamn, the line for what he considers freak shit suited only for ripping on has got to be a bit closer to Shadman than it is for me. I mean, cartoon woman being raped by a dog in a public humiliation ritual crosses it easily for me, personally. <laughs> you know me, I do love making a spectacle of strange things, but this is just bait for which, by the way, wholeheartedly, Harmful does do a great job with that stuff. And, like, if you want someone different and unique to watch, he's obviously a UK streamer. So he'll stream more during the day, uh, especially for Americans and North Americans, all that. I would totally, totally sit there and say, go sub to him. He's got the dry sense of humor you're seeing here, but his lives are a little bit quicker paced. And he goes for quite a while at points who knows what kind of person to click it and then watch him react to a speedrun fail compilation. What kind of fish are you going to catch with a worm like that on your hook? This kind. The kind that's into that stuff and will share the source for your viewers in the comments. Uh, wait a second. That profile pic. Who's that little cartoon girl? I, I swear I've seen her before. Again, so we got Gara coming back again. Something that Sen pointed out. Uh, and Nesma Jack said, there's no way Nux didn't know about the drawing of Keemstar's kid. Yeah, I kind of find that hard to believe, especially with uh, Nux's friends and like the people that he surrounds himself with. They're into that stuff. They're going to know. They're friends with. Muda is directly friends with Keemstar. Christ, just look at fucking Lolcal Live recently to see that. And I mean, they obviously say that out loud. Oh, how adorable. What a sweet child. I've also seen her in a thumbnail of a video on Nux Talk. By the way, so Mr. Zen pointed out the one Gara thing, like, and I was like, wow, uh, this is worse. So, you know, Nux should have Nux should have been thankful that the stuff Sen was pointing out was not as fucking bad as the shit that fucking Harmful's pointing out here, because you're gonna hear about this fucking image and it's fucking disgusting. Aku's Nuxanor channel. A rather unwise reverse image search on Google eventually leads you to a hentai site page where the image, which features an erect penis that had just been cut off for the thumbnail, is tagged with, among other labels, imminent rape. Lowly. Further, on the topic of his viewers being inspired to seek the porn he showcases in thumbnails, although he does sometimes help them out by pinning the porn artist's name when it's commented, there is also a porn sick- So there's no getting around it. There's no around it. He knows. He knows it's porn. Obviously, if he's porning the pin- or pinning the porn artist in the fucking video. Like, you cannot deny it fellow on the fan run Nux Taku subreddit who goes by reality underscore false who is a prodigious source poster for everything else. He posts the thumbnail and shares where the porn's from. Or at least he did until he was apparently banned three years ago. That said, his posts still remain, meaning he functions as an archive for Nux Taku's changed or deleted dodgy choices from before that point. Like this. Hey look, it's our little friend again. The source image isn't tagged with lowly on the site it's shared on this time, 
but I'm going to go ahead and say that's a cartoon of an undeveloped teen or preteen hairless girl getting railed. Neat. FYI, <laughs> this whole... <laughs> I'm sorry, but uh-huh. Harmel's fucking delivery and shit... <laughs> Neat. I just love how he's like <laughs> so like, like the mix of like the deepness of his voice and like the monotoneness. The dryness like, of the neat. humor is not yeah. escaped on me. Like I love Harpool's opinions, like his lives. I, I seriously I do enjoy them. But like again, it's one of those things that like, okay, yeah, they banned this dude, but now the di- it's still sitting there as an archive to find all this stuff. So it's like it's not like you're that disgusted with whatever happened that you're distancing your distancing yourself from it if you're still having it as an archive. Well, and you're also like you know posting it in your thumbnail. Yeah. So it's like I don't know what more of an endorsement you could have other than like I'm actively like promoting it by putting it in my thumbnail. Yeah. The whole video was deleted for some reason. So I don't know what was in it. By the way, that little shark girl, she's an avatar for a VTuber, and she's called Gura. Here's a little clip where Nuxtaku mentions her. There's lollies, which I have absolutely nothing against. I don't think anyone has anything against lollies, okay? Like Chibidoki, or Megumin from Konosuba, or Gura. Nothing has anything against lollies. It's lolly that's the gray zone. (laughs) He's very clear, though. It's gray. It's not full pedo. His thumbnails aren't full pedo. It's sus, but they're just cartoons. This guy's pinned tweet that he retweeted is this, all right? Look, it's lewd lolly stuff. That That's that's a line, all right? Lewd lolly stuff, that's that's the gray zone. Not actual pedophilia, but the gray zone. But he has it in the fucking thumbnail where the girl's mouth is fucking wired open with a fucking dick just in front of it. But, you know, this is gray zone stuff. But, like, uh, again, this is somebody that, you know, Sen showed, took a hard stance on that Lolly is, Lolly's bad, Lolly CP, and all that stuff, like, and then here he is using this shit? Like, come the fuck on, bro. Come the no, fuck yeah, on. It's, it's you're really not, hard for me to, like, You're not fleecing side. me. <laughs> yeah, it's hard for me to be like, oh, no, no, I, I get it, it's a joke, man. Like, yeah, I no. Like, there's no like, gray here. There is literally only black and white, and you're falling in the black. The black abyss of shit that is gross and fucking disgusting and deplorable. I'm a bit harsher regarding people who are aroused by depictions of children, especially depending on, you know, how realistic the proportions are, but I can tolerate that perspective elsewhere. I've heard him go into a bit more detail about his thoughts. This is like one of those debates that in the anime community, it's so divided. Like, there are actual people that think it's not weird to fetishize lollies. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Uh, definitely better to fetishize lollies than real-life children. That's not the debate, but that doesn't make it not weird and cringe and someone that I would keep away from, you know, my kids, per se. Quite a light tone. So I'm still not really buying the idea he'd have been super hostile to Shadman in a collab. Be real, it would have been light ribbing that any weirdo cartoon cunny connoisseur has heard a million times. But I wonder, how does that opinion play out in terms of letting children around the kind of people who use lowly porn in their thumbnails to expose a mass audience to such material? Just a thought. One more little thing I want to peep before getting back on track a bit. Presumably with this being his take on lowly, his take on cartoons, we could definitely expect him to be much more serious about questionable things involving real children, right? Okay, this shit was fucking bad, and I don't give a shit if you're, if it's a joke or what, but like, did you see this video at all, Jim? Like, I don't know. That video? Well, the, just the harmful opinions video at all. Have you seen it to like... Yeah, no, I watched it fully. Like, okay. I watched it all the way through. Okay. So you know about this part, right? Yeah. Holy fuck. What was your thoughts on this? Before like we even get into it, because like they don't really see much on screen right now. Oh, well, it, it's it's hard to say because like I'm an Animal Crossing fan. <laughs> like I, I find it a, a chill thing. So I've seen source material. Okay. And it's like, yeah, the fact that, like, it's a children's game, and, like, if it's on an adult site, whatever. And I think Harmful even actually brings this up. If it's on an adult site, that's whatever. 
but Nox put it on YouTube to like children who like Animal Crossing. Yeah. Who could look up what's this video and then be exposed to porn. Yeah. And it's one of those things where it's like that's disturbing because it's like the it's like the Animal Crossing to child grooming pipeline. You know what I mean? Like. Yeah. It, it's I I've never liked like um child IPs being NSFW'd. Yeah, like I, I think like it's Gen fucking Pat. weird. Yeah. Like, I, 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 I've seen a lot of them, um, because there's a lot of oh god, what was it? There's a couple of videos that I've come across where it's like weird communities and stuff like that. Like, I didn't realize there was whole like, um, Smurf communities that are doing like, uh, active RP as Smurfs doing Rule Thirty Four stuff. Um, Smurf at B Village. Yeah. <laughs> like, but yeah, no, there's some really sick shit out there if you don't return some rocks. Uh, I, I, I came across that in a video and I'm like, the fucking what? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, I know there's also stuff like just because of what I covered with the, uh, the uncanny stuff that's going on with, uh, The Incredibles. I, it kind of ended up crossing paths with like, there's also some like shit, like there's rule 34 bluey shit out there and stuff like that. Yeah. And it's like, bro, why? Like, why? yeah. Like, how's that? It's another one you have like, yeah. Like a lot of these other cat go away. Well, Stop like, harassing them. I, 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 first of all, I find all of it like fucking weird. But, like, to sit there and say, like, I could almost sit there and say, like, look, nobody's going to, like, no kid is feasibly going to come across, like, Smurfs and stuff like that. I doubt there's anything syndicated running right now. So, uh, odds are, if you're looking up that kind of stuff, you're probably of an older demographic, I'm hoping. But, like, Bluey is, like, a hot children's show right now. Yeah. Like, well, so... It's like that and like sonic and what like mario with the mario movie and the mario game still being popular like yeah it's it's not some it's not some like weird nostalgic fucking thing that i again i'm not excusing i'm just saying like i could see this like you being a gooner for that long and like you built up this <laughs> nostalgic goon for like princess peach's peach <laughs> You, like, you have you have like this <laughs> like this fucking Smurf orgy fetish. Yes. <laughs> you want Gargamel to really gargle? Like I, I don't know. Um, but like, I just when it comes to like newer stuff like the Animal Crossing and like Bluey especially really bothered me when I found yeah, out that stuff because then it's like. Okay, there's way it's there's too high of a proclivity for kids who are actually going to be looking for this stuff to then just come across it. It's kind of like I found out there's a bunch of gore content with like My Little Pony that's yeah. like out there, and it's like, ah, this is stuff that people are still young enough they don't need to be finding this shit. Like it's not secured in any way, shape, or form. It's well, just yeah, in I... existence with the stuff. Like, we're internet people, right? So, like, I have, like, safe search on my kid's tablet. Yeah. I have family. Like, I can see exactly what he looks at, downloads, and all that other shit. Not everybody knows to put safe search on. Yeah. No. And no. Like, I've been, like, one of the more, like, active, like, telling people in my family, like, protect the kids. Because, like, they out there. <laughs> like, hide your kids hide your wife kind of thing. Like, I feel like I'm that kind of person right now because I'm like, no, you don't understand. I'm literally talking about the topics where these people are going on to like the sexual degeneracy of like Roblox communities and fucking Minecraft. And like, these are the people that like that these kids are watching. Like there was a very real moment for me with all of the stuff that came out with the dog pack shit where like, I was like, this is really bad. And it's really bad yeah. for me personally because I know I have two young nephews that like are really into Mr. B stuff and like they're looking up to him and I'm going to have to now tell the parents or tell them directly, like probably start watching somebody else. This guy's not a good guy. Like he associates with some bad people and try and like explain them, explain to them why they should stay away from this person because of the pedophilia and the rampant bullshit of like people trying to sexualize fucking minors without telling them all of this shit. 
Yeah, like, no, you don't understand. Like, you know, like, I just did a stream on it last week with my friends. Like, yeah. there's literally people that work for Mr. Beast that use that position to bring in minors, and they were talking to them sexually. Yes. Like, this is like exactly what you're Open porn would... in Discords, like, and shit like that. And it's like, and you're already not paying attention to what these kids are doing online, let alone to know what channels are in Discords and shit. Like, and I don't yeah, trust it, it enough because, like, there's also been situations I've heard about recently where, like, shit happened and, like, uh, the stuff that you brought to me with the Lyle Convoy thing that I had you checking out. Like, where, oh, yeah. where, where the verification failed and, like, minors got in, there's shit here, there probably should not be around minors, and they ended up having to, like, ex expel all these fucking minors. Yeah, that, that was on accident. There. Yeah, that was on accident. Like that wasn't. It, so it's like if that can happen on accident, imagine with people like that are looking for it. Mm -hmm. Like that's the scary part. Like, like yeah. if you look at some of the messages with like, and I've seen this, and this pisses me off to no end. So I want your opinion on this. There were people that were saying like, oh, well, Chris Tyson met Lava with Lava's parents. That doesn't matter. You don't know what's if the parents are not aware of what's going on behind the scenes. That, that doesn't matter, because the kid could have been fucking contorted and twisted enough. I mean, we've obviously seen it. If you've seen any of the stuff that's come out on Twitter, where they're like totally fucking changed their position now. They didn't even think that they were groomed, and now they're well, looking yeah. back on the logs and they're like, "No, this is fucking bad." Yeah, well, let me sell you on my point. Chris meets Lava's parents. Yeah. Really nice and respectful. Oh, cool. Yeah, that you can go hang out with that Chris person. They were really nice. Yeah, it just opens up Now they up let an them avenue. go see Chris yeah. alone. Yeah. And now that, now that you know, there's no way that that person would, you know, want to fondle my kid or whatever. Like, no, just because you meet somebody once, that doesn't give you, like, oh, well, I don't think anything happened to Lava then. No, but don't you see, like, it, maybe it's my parent brain, but, like, I wouldn't trust somebody after once meeting them and be like, yeah, okay. But, like, how do I know that that wasn't, like, you know, Chris's way of, like, getting, um, I don't want to say the word, like, verification, but sort of, like, let the parents it gives feel them a pass. Mountain, be it like, gives them that access. Yeah. Like, it, it's yeah. kind of like you get almost like that, that, uh, that, that, that worry free access. It's like, well, I don't know this person. I've never met them. They're just online people. Now I meet them. Now I talk to them for a bit. I think they're okay. Yeah. Oh, you can go hang out with that nice Chris person alone at his house. You yeah. Know, like, yeah. No, I, I, that, that nice person we met and had, um, KFC with that one time. Yeah. No, no, you can go hang out alone with them. Well, and how that's many times when has it happened where it's been teachers? You're yeah, sending your school or family. You're sending your kids to school under the pretense of like you're putting them in a safe environment. And how many times has it turned around that there's been a predator in there? And it's like, are we not questioning that? No, we're just going to keep sending the kids to school. I, I, I understand that there's a lot more that goes on with that, that it's not like as easy to dismiss as like somebody going and seeing somebody. Um, there's a huge uh, discrepancy. <sighs> There's a huge, I, I, a huge void in the cost of child care to where it's not like you could sit there and say, oh, they couldn't send them to school. It's not like that's an option for some people. I get that. So before we go down that fucking route, but like, I, I understand the spirit of your argument, right? Like you're like, you know, you, you go to the school, you feel it out. Oh, this teacher feels safe. This teacher feels good. Yeah. And it turns out they're keeping them after class and the study sections are actually molestation. Yeah. Like I just you know heard what I a mean? fucking story and whether it's true or not, I'm not going to like totally like sit there and say it of like somebody assaulting a fucking like kindergartner. Yeah. I'm like, that's so beyond and like the kid's not even gonna know to say anything, necessarily. Yeah, yeah, and that and that's the the part that's like completely messed up, like at that early age. So it's like, it it, it bothers me because it's like, in a way, it's not like I'm not saying like Nux is a groomer, right, or anything like that. But that's how kids start, like they, they it's desensitization. Like yeah, well, you, oh, I like Animal Crossing. Ankh is one of my favorite characters because I like kitties. What's this? Yeah, and then like. Well, um, he's, he may not be in the house of grooming or pedophilia or any of that, but he's sure as shit at the fucking gate exposure. inside the property. Yeah. Exposure. And um, 
I know she was on now recording um Scumbagovich. Yeah. She does a lot of good content on like fetish art and a lot of the content she she goes over is like weird stuff from when you're a kid that you get exposed to. Yeah. And if for some reason it just clicks with you like it clicks with your lizard brain. And that's where like fetishes develop, right? Yep. It's like something psychologically. So I think it's like you're you're almost instinctively instilling these like fetishes in kids. Well, look at the fucking and, uh the Dan what's his fucking name from Nickelodeon and with all the fucking feet thing that were Dan fucking Schneider. weird. Dan Schneider with all the feet stuff with like Amanda Bynes and stuff like that. Like there was some weird stuff there. And it's like that's obviously feeding into a grown man's fetish. Yeah. And it's like but it's Everybody also to going it. to it's gonna warm up to like this is normalized for those kids growing up in that era. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah. yeah, and it's and it's just like that with art, you know? So, like, that's actually a really interesting, like, if any of you in the audience are interested in stuff like that, Scumbagovich does really good content on that. And some of it's, like, you know, like the Wonder Bread thing she did. There's this dude with this guy that spent over, like, close to six figures on fetish art of women in business suits buying Wonder Bread. Because, like, it's, like, this weird <laughs> thing that when he was a kid that it's, like, this, I, it's, like, this fetish for, like, hating the environment and women in powerful positions and stuff like that. So it's, like, this actually, like, you think it's ridiculous, but when you start piecing together the psychological pieces, it's, like, oh, okay. So it's, like, it, it, like these kids, like, you're exposing kids that just have, like, this, I want to find more about Animal Crossing, and then you, like... Like they grow up, and for some reason, their fetish is to be dominated by someone in a cat suit. This is how you make furries, is what Jim's saying. Don't let your in kids become way, furries. Yeah. This is <laughs> this is how you make furries. Do you want? It's like that quote from Archer. Like, do you want furries? Because this is how you get furries. <laughs> like... It all comes back to furries. This is how you get furries. <laughs> Now, pay attention. Like, I have captions on, so you're going to pick up the words probably a lot easier. But, you know, Harmful is going to touch on this again. <laughs> Wait. Allowed on the platform. That's not. I know, right? It's funny. That's the other thing. Extremely concerning. For clarity, the words I heard him say were. So now you got all these underage kids on TikTok doing the things. Obviously solo, but the implication is there. And then straight into commenting on how catchy the song is. Teehee, I'm sorry. Kids mimicking a pornographic cartoon of an Animal Crossing character having sex on TikTok is not the kind of thing I'd use as a throwaway line in a video I'm making as a grown man. And like, okay, maybe it's because like Nux has not been exposed to kids to know that they fucking mimic every fucking thing, whether they find it fucking funny or not. But like, okay, I, I'm, look, I'm going to apologize in advance if any of my nephews ever find this in the future. But I'm exposing one of you right now. <clears throat> <laughs> oh God. Okay. okay so there was a search history revealed to me by one of my nephews and it was uh big boobies but are big butts but a lot or something like that like what? and it's because this kid's seen stuff on youtube and like another one of them again not saying names i'm not going to expose anybody in particular, but this is a story from before I met my wife. Apparently knew about the fucking hack with the fucking breastfeeding thing on t on YouTube. Like, these kids are not stupid. They're not fucking stupid, but they will mimic shit. So it's not going to be above, like, fucking kids to see this shit on TikTok, on YouTube, and even fucking around not knowing what they're doing, mimic it. Well, not only that, but, like, when you said with the searching, right, this is actually, like, you're psychologically watching a fetish form. Yes. Like, it's, and that's something that I've been, like, getting interested in, like, is, like, the psychology of stuff like that. Because I find it fascinating. Yeah, like, I just, but like, I, I find it's, like, I find it 
sad that as a internet in fucking 20 years, we haven't been able to figure out ways to maybe shy kids away from this stuff better than we do. And you could say, well, you're not supposed to be on YouTube unless you're 13. Well, I'm sorry. There's a lot of shit that I wasn't supposed to be on because I was underage and went into it with something awful and fucking, uh, best gore and stuff like that. And like, it's not a fetish for me, but it's a macabre interest for me now. I, I, I can, I'll say this out loud. My son is seven. If in eight years or no, wait, my math brain. When he's 13, because I'm not doing math right now, because fuck math. Because <laughs> right, I did the math, and like, he's way older than that. But six, like, six, the what? answer is six. <laughs> Thank you, Patrick. I'm just going to lay out now with math. Six, in six years, when he's 13, even if he follows the YouTube terms of service, I wouldn't want him seeing a censored hentai of Nuxtaku dancing to... Of, on, of Anka fucking villager, and then Nuxtaku, there's like toothy grin fucking israeli png bouncing in front of it like whoa this whoa, is guys. catchy this is this is hentai and this is on tiktok guys this is a catchy song as you know like you're seeing literally simulated sex acts behind him censored but still very clear in what they're doing yeah wiggling an avatar around in front of a censored porn vid Children being drawn to adult material by use of a family-friendly IP and then being influenced to recreate it in videos for attention is spine-tingling. Masses of minors conditioned into producing soft-core chomo porn. This is a pedo's dream. Literally. There are jokes to be made, sure. Jokes to be made about everything. But just saying what's happening happily and lightheartedly? That's just normal and chill to Nux? For me, that's evidence we're in Nightmare World. If you don't quite get what's spooking me here, here's Turkey Thomas explaining a relevant strategy <laughs> used Turkey Thomas. I call him Thomas. For you. <laughs> Funnily enough, this clip features an image you might recognize. EPI is a shorthand for early introduction, in which minors are exposed to adult content. They fantasize about perverting their innocence, often by utilizing Rule 34 to flood sites with a younger demographic. It's a form of fetch mining explicitly used to groom children. Flooding a mixed audience site with adult material to introduce children to a kind of porn they might be more comfortable with. To hook them, huh? Interesting. Not suggesting this was Nuxtaku's intent with these, Perhaps so many are removed because he realized how bad a look it is, or maybe it just became a YouTube problem at some point. But what I would suggest is that his clickbait strategy shows supremely terrible judgment, or recklessness, at the very least. Back to his TikTok comment. I find it concerning that children performing these actions on camera for anyone to see could represent direct success of this strategy. And even if it's not the direct outcome of this deliberate tactic, it's sickening that there's a system that nudges kids to produce material for these freaks. Okay, lolly's a gray area. All right, Nux. What do you think adults watching those kids on TikTok are? And remember, not to necessarily blame anyone who produces adult material that utilizes video game elements and tries to keep it in appropriate places, but just by these animations existing, you end up with commenters talking about them on parts of the web that do appeal to kids and which they freely access in a way that wouldn't generate parental suspicion, such as in the comments for game music that's been featured in such porn, perhaps directing them there. Forget the quote-unquote lowly gray area. Genuine, hardcore nonces love when things work out this way. Hear it straight from the pedo's mouth. Well, not Tom, but the guy he's quoting. I love the idea of cute drinking to pull their favorite games. By the way, if you ever want some, like, depraved fucking shit, look into Tom's Giggly Goon Clown fucking video. That's some fucking fucked shit. That's how I got a p addiction. Ah, uh, but perhaps I've been premature. Maybe I've been unfair. Nux does continue to talk about that TikTok trend in his video. I'm sure he'll elaborate on the children he mentioned miming sex. This is currently the most concerning trend on TikTok. Is it really the most concerning trend on TikTok? There's literally a trend right now called devious licks, where people break into schools or are in schools and steal stuff. That is a trend on TikTok right now. But no, this, this is the most disturbing trend on TikTok. All right, dude. All right, dude. Sorry, what? 
You're really going to tell me that kids are creating erotic dance material for pedos to enjoy, and then the follow-up is to downplay it? You can discuss which is worse, perhaps taking into account risk of injury, reputation, future ruination, blah blah blah. But why take a side so hard? Well, more and more TikTokers have started to recreate that dance and it's it got sus. people concerned. Basically, a lot of people are afraid that the dance is going to get really popular and kids are going to start coming on the app and doing it and get targeted by predators. No one's afraid of that. All right. Bullshit. I have tons of people on TikTok that I have saved to go over that are degenerates. There's one guy that did it so many fucking times. He's been literally harassed around fucking England to the point that he's like nearly permanently in police protection because everybody in the fucking whole of England knows that he's fucking fucky with kids and he gets this shit beaten out of him. And I feel zero, zero issue with that. There are definitely people on this fucking app that are definitely out there just to go after fucking kids. I mean, it's a big enough yeah. fucking issue that, like, I don't even go on TikTok because it's fucking, it's awful. It's, it's brain rock content, if you want my fucking honest opinion about it. Maybe oh, it it's is. gotten better, but it's, and it targets, it allows these people to cross paths nearly organically. But if you know how to manipulate your algorithm, you know how to get access to these kids really fucking easy. Fuck, I I almost want to, like, fucking pull it up just to show you guys. Like, here, I'll pull it off screen real quick. But, like, there's, uh, I, I want to think of his name. That's why I want to pull it up really fucking quick. Playlist. And... It's like, like Go ahead. I made a TikTok account, right? Just... Because, you know, my friends send me TikToks here and there of, like, funny shorts. So I'm like, you know what, maybe I'll I'll get on it. The first thing when I made a fresh TikTok account in my thing was some, like, e-girl doing some dance. Her face was hidden, and it was just aimed at her chest wearing a low-cut shirt. And it was just her dancing for five seconds and on repeat. Yeah, here, but I'm going like... to I'm gonna play this really quick. I just don't want to interrupt you with the audio, and I'm going to pause it right away. What is it? Okay. Okay. Good. No, but but that's like the kind of content like I was fed to without even having an algorithm, right? Yeah. Like I didn't have any seen videos on that TikTok account or anything because it was freshly made. And the first thing I saw was like someone shaking their some e girl shaking their chest at me with a link in bio for OnlyFans. This guy is one like, of like the most the most known predators on fucking TikTok. Like Buddy I've Haynes seen him before. has been exposed so many fucking times, it's ridiculous. And what he'll do is fucking sit there and duet videos like this because there's a duet function and sends fucking things like this and sends donos and shit. And it's fucking creepy. So tell me there's not actively fucking people out there trying to get get this. And like this dude did a great fucking predator hunter video um that's covered in this in this video. But yeah. Here's him in a park going to meet up with someone who's underage that they met on TikTok. Like, it's absolutely deplorable shit. No, um, they wouldn't do that. Yeah. That, that, that's not a concern. He's been banned off the platform so many times and still comes back actively now sitting on Twitch. Yeah. And it's not like, like, there's only so much they can do, right? Like, yeah. Because you can, you can make a new account they can ip ban you you can vpn you can spoof your hardware you know what i mean like there's so yeah. many ways to circumvent it yeah that doesn't even get into like if you're running dedicated ips where you could just change your ip manually yeah. like but like i just there there's absolutely there that is such a bullshit answer on nux side to fucking sit there and say that shit and like be that obtuse about it and it aggravates me it aggravated me when i saw it Maybe I'm not around TikTok enough, and I don't understand the ecosystem. You don't need a degree in computer science for this, buddy. You told me <laughs> kids are posting these videos. Who do you think might be watching? But I don't think that people are afraid of kids being targeted by predators because they're doing a dance, okay? Kids are targeted by predators on TikTok for freaking breathing crooked. I don't think this dance is going to push anyone over the edge, but that's just me. Oh no, it absolutely will push them over the edge. And I mean that in a very disgusting way. Nux can comprehend the sus nature of Loli and what it may suggest about those who enjoy it. 
but will tell us that kids are filming themselves mimicking sex acts for anyone in the world to watch and can't understand intuitively why that's messed up, regardless of whether or not someone comes and abducts them. Not sure our boy's all there on that point of what apparently seems normal for him, if even this sickening ecosystem is only cause for light-hearted comment and a downplay. You'll have to forgive me again if my doubts regarding exactly how hard Nux would have grilled Shadman over lowly stuff continue to grow exponentially. Even without this little context detour, there was one man who doubted even without all this information. Remember from earlier, it was lyrics, Let's pick that back up now. Appreciate the reply. If you have a history of doing many collabs for the sole purpose of trolling them, I think this is fair. Not gonna lie, when saying I was asking for a collab as a troll, it looks kind of bad. If that's what you've done before, it's believable. Well, this over here is a collab where I collabed with Kagi Films, a voice actor, and it was purely for the... Pr I told him that we were going to get... Blah, blah, blah. So Lyrics very fairly asks Nux, who claims he would only have Shadman on to troll him, if he has a history of bringing people on to mess with them, clearly meaning something like an ambush, really mess with them. Lyrics wants proof that Nux would treat Shadman rough, obviously. Here are a couple clips I've selected from the videos Nux uses to demonstrate he's a real stone-cold troll beast. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> the thing is, you're actually one of the best dub voice actors. Whenever I see you in a show, I'm always excited. Like, I hey. actually, I unironically watch the Horimiya dub because I think you do such a good job. Oh, thanks, man. Uh, it, it's I a usually really cute watch show. Anime dub. I usually watch anime. Can you translate any of this for me, Jim? I have no idea who this guy is and what's going on and what any of that stuff was. Oh, he basically, he's an English VA. Okay. He does, he does, so like, you know, when you do dubbed, like you have American people doing English voices. Okay, yeah. That's what he is. And he's just mentioning the anime, an anime that he worked on, that it was, he, he said that it was so good that he watched the dub version. It would be like me trolling you and be like, oh, Patrick, <laughs> I, I don't watch commentary streams, but I watch yours because you're, you're such a great streamer. That's the equivalent. So he's glazing like the total world. shit out of him. Yeah, no, no, it's 100% glazed, because he's saying, like, I normally watch sub. In anime communities, dub versus sub is, like, really one of these, like, they're very elitist. Okay. So when somebody's saying, I watch sub, that's like saying, I only eat filet mignon. But your cheeseburger <laughs> was so good, I enjoyed it, and I'll order another one. Right? Okay. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's basically trying to, you know, it's saying that your performance was that perfect. Okay. I will actually go out of my elitist preferred method of consuming this content just for you. Okay. And so it's sub? really gross. Yeah. <laughs> like he's 100% glazed. He's not even just glazing. He's deep throating him. Oh god. Like. Well, thanks, man. Uh, it, it, it's I a really cute show. Anime sub. I usually watch anime and sub. Mm -hmm. But Horimiya, dude, you kill it. Uh, roll the clip of me killing the turtle. Oh. He's very owned, and you clearly have no fondness for each other. Damn, what a killer. Disclaimer! I swore that I would put this in the intro if the One Piece action adaptation looks awesome, and I'm not saying or confirming that anything happened behind the scenes, but it looks actually really cool based on what I was told. All right, we're, go we're gonna just keep it like that for uh, legal ambiguity. No matter what he does after this point, this video, is effectively an ad. Self-aware dick-sucking is still dick-sucking. What this guy's calling trolling, I call extremely light banter, general mischief, shit I do with people I like. He shows us stuff like tricking people into saying words so he can snip them together into a song, messing around with Deji. It's bog standard social media cross promo. Him saying it's not doesn't make it true. It just means he's retarded or lying. I'll let you pick. The one clip he shows where he kind of goes in on someone doesn't even really count. It's Boogie2988. His brand is Punching Bag. What so it's no surprise that Lyrics <laughs> wasn't satisfied. He said, so I just looked through the two examples you gave me of the videos where you quote unquote troll and you lied to my face, dude. You shouted out both of them, said you had a fun time and said they were cool guys. These vids are literally just promotion for them, 
weird examples you gave to defend the sh okay. Shadman collab request. Can you clear this up, dude? It seems you were completely dishonest to me in your framing here. And from these examples, I can only assume you would treat Shadman the same if you would have gotten the collab. Fair, I'd say. It's worse that Nux gave these examples than if he gave no examples at all. Sadly, as far as I can tell at the time of writing, Nux Taku didn't have time to respond to these ones. Odd. And this statement from Nux's video seems really odd now, doesn't it? Collabs are not promotions or condonement in any way on my channel. I don't think I like this guy. He gives me weirdo, slimy worm vibes. And you know what? I take back what I said at the beginning. Given such a severe mismatch between my values, my perspective on things, my judgment, my understanding of communication of things, and his, I wouldn't take his word on the general characterization of his Shadman interactions anymore despite having been willing to give benefit of the doubt earlier. I just scrolled back in my DMs uh, from, uh, oh, how, how old is this? One sec. 2020 with Shadman, because he sent me some wild shit. To a man like this, what even counts as wild shit anyway? Knowing Nuxtaku's level of tolerance, I doubt he's solely referring to the couple of messages he shared publicly. Do you really still believe, given just the few highlights I've shared, that he really thought Shadman was purely a freak specimen to be toyed with? Bear in mind, he claims during all of this he was unaware of the Keemstar daughter thing. So Shad, to him, was just an edgy lolly boy. Which brings me to one last little Shad nugget that made me chuckle. Also, Nux used a censored picture of Shadman's porn comic of Arya Stark played by a child actor of Game of Thrones for a thumbnail. This is all wrong! Okay, so we'll, we'll just do this one first. So I did use Shadman art in a thumbnail once. I made a video talked about fucking uh, awful Game of Thrones cursed Game of Thrones memes. One of the cursed sh Game of Thrones memes that popped up when I looked up fucking cursed Game of Thrones fucked up shit on Google Images was a Shadman art, and I didn't even know it was a Shadman art when I used it. I got comments saying I recognize the Shadman art, etc., etc., and I changed the art, not last week to avoid drama, not yesterday, so I could have a Zynga response video and make an apology. No apologies! I changed the art two to three years ago! All right. Seems true he changed it a long time ago. Whether you believe the way he found it or not is up to you, but we'll get to that. Also, to make things worse, they, they say that I used a picture from Shadman's porn comic of Arya Stark played by a child actress for Game of Thrones. Lies! It wasn't even Arya Stark. It was the, the freaking, the freaking you-know-nothing Jon Snow girl. It was her. It was not Arya Stark. These people literally will go crazy out of every possible... Can I just say how he said he was going to complete... This was completely wrong and everything wrong about this. And it turns out that there was one small detail that was wrong. It wasn't Arya Stark. Like... <laughs> Bravo, the most brilliant deflection. <laughs> it could have been the underage character because I was showing of the um Wait. incredibly appropriate image of an of an of age character. Wasn't wasn't the wildling fucking underage? Oh fuck it, no! I, barely, I, couldn't, I couldn't. I couldn't stay involved with Game of Thrones. I know that's like a hot take, but like it just to me, it just it it didn't. It seemed like it was like, ooh, baby's first political drama. Uh, your silence scares me. <laughs> <laughs> You're not wrong. There's a lot of uh, there's a lot of insinuation in there. Same with like the boys and stuff like that. It might be a good topic for the whole strictly tangent thing sometime. Uh, Actually, but yeah. uh, it it didn't end great. I'll I'll be honest with you there. I liked it. Uh, I thought there was a couple enthralling episodes. There's a couple that could have done without um, the whole romance part of the fucking uh, um, the wildling thing. Like it just, it, it, I never got sold on it. I was, I would thought it was a cooler story to have Jon Snow fucking be this fucking badass fucking bastard child fucking sent away from the family arc. But you know, <laughs> yeah, I mean, for me, like, when you have something like Game of Thrones that's, like, this political thriller, and then you look at history and you find, like, things that are just as intriguing, but then you have to take a step back and be like, no, this was actual reality. 
like this actually happened in like France or this happened in like Italy, this happened in the Roman Empire or whatever. That to me is more intriguing because it's real. Yeah, but it's just fictionalization for people to grasp it better because they're not going to sit there and go through a history class. This is see, this is this thing. is coming from somebody who wanted to be a history teacher at one point. <laughs> yeah. see, that that's the weird thing because like your argument for that is the reason why it act, stuff like that is I'm actually attracted to because like you can look at it and be like this shit's real. Yeah. Yeah, I find Whoa. it I find it more interesting like I, personally I will take nonfiction over fiction, but for a dramatization of nonfiction into fiction it wasn't all bad it I just it so. mismatched I... a lot of stuff together i guess so i know i know that's probably a weird maybe it's not as a hot take now that it <laughs> ended and the ending sucked yeah but that's the same way as i feel about the walking dead no oh, the walking dead that's... don't even get me started on that fucking thing i think the comic was much better with anybody who's laid eyes on the comic tomorrow. would agree but the yeah, problem like, the problem that happened with that was the show eventually surpassed the comic. And so then you had the show writing the comic. Yeah. I mean they had they and even they, added Daryl into it. Like, yeah. Yeah. And they and they also did a lot of stuff to uh satiate their audience. I mean it it was a, a lot of pandering with that. Yeah. Not everything can be a Harley Quinn. No. <laughs> you know, I think actually Harley is probably the only character I think in history that started out in an animated that actually translated well to uh, the actual source material. Yeah. Possible way. Yep, seems true too. I'm not a Game of Thrones enjoyer, but seems correct. And I know it seems true because I checked and I regret checking. I knew about the lolly stuff and some of his art, like the bestiality with fictional children, etc. Yeah. The collection of images the thumbnail pick came from includes such an example of child dog rape. Now, I'm not saying he's lying about his knowledge of the true source of the image. Who could prove that? But I do find it really funny that in the set, there are two versions of the girl he used. One more developed with larger breasts and one with much smaller breasts, which could be seen as catering to a normal range of tastes, but given the artist becomes slightly sinister. What tickles me, you see, is that, of course, of course, Nux Taku's old thumbnail used the less developed version. I do also have to explain another reason for my unprovable suspicion about his honesty. Back in the day, my exposure to Shadman was primarily just seeing people talking about him, and the only thing of his I remember ever seeing is drawings of Hillary Clinton as a lolly. However, I, I think we kind of talked about this already, but I've seen censored versions of the Trump thing. I've seen censored versions of, uh, oh God. So there was the, the kid actor, the Lieutenant Corbis thing, the picture that, um, uh, Ava Chris Tyson purchased and there was something else. And like, I've seen all of them. And so I wasn't even I wasn't even involved on Twitter. Like, really think about it. Like, I wasn't on Twitter. I found all of that stuff organically through fucking YouTubers that I was watching at the time. In looking into recent drama, you I have become Lolly Hillary Clinton. Yes. I can't believe it, but someone found a way to make Hillary Clinton more offensive. <laughs> oh man. Become more familiar with Shadman's style than I'd ever want to be. He's a freak, but he's a skilled freak, and he has a style. I'm not confident that someone steeped in drawn degeneracy wouldn't have known at a glance that the drawing Nux used in his thumbnail was by Shadman. In fact, his commenters noticed immediately, for instance. Maybe it was less that he realized it was Shadman, and more that he realized people pointing out so loudly that it's Shadman was an issue. Merely a possibility. Folks, at this point, forget roasting Shadman, forget trolling him. I think that guy's in jail anyway, the time has passed. Maybe this Nux Taku guy is the one in need of some flames. Seems like a soft target for ridicule to me. Ooh, maybe someone should troll collab him like he was gonna do with Shadman. Any podcast that would do something like that? Having said that, as you know, 
I'm not an, oh no, you gotta block the weirdos and potential creeps and never interact kind of guy. But he wouldn't be my first pick of teammate. I wouldn't have him as a consistent podcast member. Just my taste. So when controversy flared, I wasn't surprised to see this. Mutahar, who ran a podcast with Nuxtaku, talking to friend of the stream, Chud Logic, about it. Mutahar initially explains his uncertainty about the situation. He did tell me, like, they interacted before. Um, I think it was, like, the collab shit. Okay. And uh, from just, like, behind the scenes, he told me that this was all, like, a fucking joke or something at the time, which is, like, I never pressed uh, so hard into that just because I have no knowledge of, like, how far his relationship goes. In spite of the uncertainty, though, things quickly got both spicier and muddier. Are you going to keep him off the podcast? Uh, no, we, we would cancel the podcast. <laughs> It's, it's not happening. The podcast Dude, is done. This is hard because obviously, you know, people will be... Podcast fucking... is done, yeah. Podcast is done now. Wait, what? See, right here. This is the way that Mudahar says this. It sounds like it's done and because of Nux. Yeah, the podcast is over. We uh, are not filming the last episode. It's over. We're not Pretty filming nuclear the last statement episode. in this context. Is that ser Are you serious? Yeah. We're not doing the podcast anymore. It's done. Why? We're supposed to film on Tuesday. Well, there's a couple reasons for it. A lot of that was obviously some of the Shad stuff, too, because we were kind of sitting there. We're like, um, me and Caleb, we and we were just like, this is, I don't know, it's weird. Uh, the other thing was we just want to redo things maybe like two months down the road or something uh, between each other, and that's kind of where we're at. This is the key snippet. Two things are mentioned. The podcast ending at an episode being cancelled. And two reasons are given. The Nux stuff being weird, and an apparent plan they already had. Do the two reasons apply to both? Does one apply to one? Does one apply to the other? Hmm. Like, Starku getting iced yeah. out. <laughs> I'm sorry. I mean, for me, for, for like, Nux or whatever, like, I talked to him, and he's, he's, a, he's a good friend behind the scenes for sure, and this whole situation, like, I would have to really look into more of his involvement and, like, everything. Like, if you want to walk me through it, like, that would be... I'd be completely fine. And then somehow it gets even less clear, because despite such definitive statements, Mutahar is again expressing uncertainty, before later really homing in on the element of Nuxtaku's character that irks me. I feel like if he, if he had any interaction, he should have just come clean entirely. It does come across a little weird that he right. made a whole response, but he admitted that part. It's like... Um, I think if you're in that camp, if you ever interacted with Chadman, just completely own up to it once, take the fucking L and move on, but that's just weird if you're not able to... I don't know, it almost seems like kind of like hiding um, an interaction for no real reason. And then a later comment sounds even worse. I mean, there's no reason to really hide it unless like you, the interaction was more deeper than it was initially. I'm gonna say I would love to be a fly on the wall when Mudahar watches this back and sees his own words and see what his thoughts are based on that because i like i know he's already apologized and we're gonna see that literally next but like i kind of wish i could see what mudahar's reaction to his own words are let on that's what i would say um... there's more said than i've shown in these clips but i think it's clear that while the specifics were murky the tone was a little hardcore it's easy to understand how people could interpret this in different ways but there were one or two concrete statements, and I want to focus on this one. We uh, are not filming the last episode, it's over. Cut and dry. It's over, they're not filming the last episode. I think we ourselves can home in on that and say, the cancellation of the last episode is probably down to the Nux Taku controversy regarding association with Shadman. But as with so many things that relate to Nux, even with this, they're slipping, they're sliding, there's sliminess. There did end up being a final episode recorded and published featuring Nux. Which isn't the issue. I'm not saying, he said there wasn't going to be and now there is. No, it's fine. It's all right. You can change your mind. However, what bothers me is the blatant sweeping, as the kids call it, that accompanied this. <laughs> One more example of spineless, subtly deceptive behavior to throw on the pile. You see, it must have been Nuxtaku's lucky day. Chud Logic and a Twitter user, understandably given what Mutahar said and the way he said it, 
mischaracterized the situation. Chud's title stated Nux was kicked from the podcast, and the tweet claimed it was ending because of this controversy, which as we know now is not accurate. Nux seizes on this error in his defense video. He even has a big ol' yapping clip from Mutahar reinforcing that it's false. The podcast was not ending because of Nux. In fact, they intend to work together in the future if possible. Great. Looks true to me. What's the problem? That isn't all there is. That's not even necessarily the juiciest part. The announcement of the episode cancellation sounded like a snap in the moment emotional decision. And the reason for that at the time was most definitely the controversy. As confirmed on another Chud Logic stream by Mutahar's other half via Super Chat. Oh, okay. Right. So the truth is. This is Dojangle saying this, I believe, okay? So, I do. <laughs> is, this, is this it? Is this true? Could we say this? The last episode was the reason it wasn't filmed because of the Shadman stuff, but the podcast was ending any anyway. And the way Mutahar explained it made it sound like the podcast was ending because of that stuff, but it was actually the fact the last episode wasn't being filmed because of that stuff and it was going to end anyway. Is that it? Is that the fair assessment of this? Doe confirms this characterization as accurate, though it's worth noting her super chat says it was the reason at the time. Following this, Chud perceptively notes. So as... yeah, it feels like what this does then, it enables it to be like, well, it's not ending because of me, but then if it is true that the last episode wasn't filmed because of the Shadman stuff, I mean, that is worth a mention, right? But he's probably not going to mention it because he can just focus on the, well, it was going to end anyway. It was going to end anyway type thing. Yep. He lays it out again. I think it's probably true the podcast was ending anyway, and it's just the final episode wasn't isn't being recorded because of this uh, little drama that happened with the Shadman stuff, right? During this, Doe chimes in to say that the last episode has, in fact, been recorded. They backtracked, as we know, because it's been released at this point with a full cast. The otherwise perceptive Chud misses this in chat, and proceeds to theorize. Like, clearly, to me, what this seems like is, like, they don't want to fucking burn Nux Taku super hard over this. So they're giving this little out of, like, we'll make it about the podcast ending without really talking much about the reasoning for the last episode not getting filmed. That's what it seems like to me. So what this does is this reinforces the narrative in Chud's mind because he missed the one chat that says that, hey, this episode is recorded. It's recorded with the full cast uh, doe probably thinks that he saw that I, I i don't know she never restates it uh doe jangles being the significant other to mudahar um and so i'm guessing doe thought that like he understood correctly even though he was still on with the logic of like no this ended for this reason to which doe replies and confirms they don't want to burn him they're still friends. Oh, friends looking out for friends. So it's a sweep. A minor sweep, but a sweep nonetheless. Last episode was originally going to be cancelled over creepy shit? Into the memory hole. That statement was never made. And while they do briefly help Nux out with the drama at the start of their last episode, nothing about Mutahar's original intent or statement of cancellation is mentioned as far as I can tell. Never happened, I guess. Doesn't matter not pertinent to direct discussion of the drama that was directly responsible for this episode being planned to never occur. In fact, I feel really sleepy. Maybe Mutahar never had those feelings or said those things that thousands of people have heard. I must be mistaken. To me, this is one more little tiny PR asswipe for the guy who constantly needs spot cleaning when his butt gets too dirty. Look, it's cool to have internet video friends, but when that means clearly strategizing to manipulate an audience's perception of reality to their benefit, it rubs me the wrong way. Once you're creating mass media, once you're broadcasting to people, that's not being a good friend. That's called being compromised by friendship. Though, to be fair, friendship might not be the right term. Think about it. 
We saw in that interview, Mutahar didn't really know what was happening, but was ready to knee-jerk throw Nuxtaku under the bus. Controversy? Who? Not doing the last episode, even though that's a really, really bad look for Nuxtaku. Maybe Mutahar's explanation was so garbled out of panic. The worst of both worlds. Memory holding what happened because it's a bad look for your associate, but they're not a close enough associate really to have not knee-jerk screwed them on a live stream in the first place, which you then need to pretend it didn't happen. It's a real shame that Chud chilled on it after getting his answers so quickly for some reason. I think there was plenty more fun that could have been had. This isn't even really a high-pressure thing. The stakes aren't that high for Nux Taku. It's not like much of his existing audience would turn on him over a Shanman association, regardless of how tenuous or close it may be, or because large creators cancel a show over it making it look like they're judging him. Just look at what's enticed them to click on videos over the years. They'd probably be into it, but... Anyway, so that's that's Harmful's video, and so I want to go on immediately into this next area, and I'm going to jump forward, because there's a lot of, like, reiteration between um nick diorio and turkey tom about like what's going on and this harmful opinions video turkey tom did not watch the harmful opinions video yet nick had and then chud watched it on stream but at one point mudahar comes in and so i will play it from just where he comes in then is a total freak yo so i oh. just um so i was like taking a shower and all that shit but i was watching the harmful opinions video um i watched through a decent amount of it mm. yeah it, it seems to me like uh nux is a completely unprincipled person basically on this shit and basically willing to use the generous stuff when it's convenient and then you know uh when it's called out he's like well i never really did that you know i feel so now tom's went he left for a bit he comes back um while they're already talking with mudahar and he's like yeah while i was gone i took a shower i watched this video and like now coming back yeah no this is bad and i will never personally work with nuxtaku i feel like uh that's <laughs> yeah and also like if those videos aren't age restricted i feel like they definitely should be because you probably shouldn't be showing uh you know porn like that on a website where i know it's censored or whatever but even censored stuff like you probably shouldn't be showing that consistently to a website full of minors in the context of like haha funny joke and then you know who knows what they get into as a result of that and that's basically my takeaway wait you should have yeah one of those videos i mean nux's whole thing and on youtube is like porn reactions right mm -hmm. yeah stuff's not good <laughs> it's, it's i not don't got nothing to say bro i've said it all my energy is depleted okay my social batteries are at zero dom's just come in and said yeah. that i mean what more is there to say i don't know <laughs> So, yeah, what other people do is up to them, but um, yeah, I'm gonna try to get Nux to talk about this video on stream at some point. But again, my uh, biggest issue with Nux is his video defending Zero. I thought that was out of pocket, and I think that's still up. So I don't know. I, 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 you know, people can do what they want to do, but I personally don't really want to do anything with Nux Taku anymore. So yeah, there you go. Is that what you wanted, Shud? The disavowal? Well, no, dude, that's so gay. I never. <laughs> I was happy to move I, on I'm, from this I'm and joking. never care but, again. But, but yeah but i, I mean, appreciate seems, it nonetheless okay thank you thank he you. seems he seems very very uh I'll I'm say, say, I'm un, saying, there's a lot of pictures running around but so is zero he's like a person he's just he's just, he's still kicking you know what i'm just saying yeah well Bro, i'll let you deal with whatever that is but uh as far as um nux yeah i don't know i just i don't really <laughs> i don't really want to do content with him i feel like his commentary is kind of hindered by the fact that he is clearly kind of unprincipled on this stuff what would he have to, to do for least. you to, uh, to to change your perspective on that, do you think? What would he have to do to change my perspective on it? Um... Is this video that scathing? I'm gonna go Paulie McCoy said, know, what about like... Destiny, Thomas? Uh, well, Destiny only wanted to bend Courtney over a tricycle, so we can't really disavow that, you know? Lol. I'll link you the whole um, opinions video. What would, he, what would he have to, to do? I, I, I don't know if there's anything he can do. I don't know. I mean, even if the thing is, even if he apologizes, like, following, you know, fair enough. But I just, I don't really want to, like, hang out with the guy on streams and stuff, you know? Oh, damn. Listen, Mutar, listen, mate. I'm just sending you this oh. video. You do as you wish with it, okay? Um, yeah. I don't know what else to say. Is that it? Are we done? Is there anything else to add? No, this feels so awkward now. I had all this energy, and now it just feels awkward. I mean, I don't know. I think it's a good fucking confrontation. I sent the <laughs> fucking stuff over to Nox. I think, like, he should have a good explanation for it. If he doesn't, then 
we shouldn't be working yeah. together. I think the Tom perspective is good. It's like, I'm going to watch this video, and I would like to believe that me and Tom have a pretty similar worldview going forward and how we perceive things. And if Tom says that, then fuck him. There's a 99% yeah. chance that I'll probably walk away from this video thinking maybe it's just going to be me and Caleb on that show. I'm to be clear, the video doesn't that. show that um, Nox Taku is a, is a pedophile, but yeah, it basically yeah. just shows that he's like very unprincipled with to them. Um, Yeah. Something like that, yeah. Yeah. Could you imagine if yeah. Shadman drew Boogie's girlfriend and like she, he he would draw them as an adult? Nicholas Duralio, once again. Boogie Boogie Boogie. You're gonna he mention should draw Boogie, Boogie as the boss baby. And he should draw um his girlfriend as like a three hundred thousand year old dragon or something. Okay, well well listen, look. Go ahead, sorry. Listen, all I want to say is, Mutar, I was very angry. This has been bubbling underneath without me admitting it, okay? I feel like, you know, the husband that's come home. Dinner isn't made for the fifth time, and I just go fucking ballistic. So thank you for coming on and uh, having the conversation. I do appreciate that. And thank you to Nicholas and Tom, too, okay? Okay. Hey, everybody. Stop, Muda here. Stop. No. Uh, all right. So uh, I did have... I pulled up off stream. Uh, here, yeah, but this is this is the good spurgatory of... Oh God, I wish there was an easy way to do this. Muta, are you is lying it, fucking scumbag? Is what is your fucking problem, dude? Why did you throw me under the bus with some dude that's got fucking lolly in his videos? What is your fucking problem? Uh, hello? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, who's supposed to be spurging here? Chud? Chud. So Chud's like, I'm gonna be calm. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be super calm when Mudahar comes out and like, he says all this stuff and then like, Muda's like, hello? <laughs> i swear i don't know how they could actually be having this conversation given that all their defenses for lyrics yeah well that's a whole nother thing here we go is that a bit is that a bit are you doing a bit muta i just got mugged i just got mugged you just, got mugged. You just got this here we go did he dm you to call in yeah this he's is coming. the whole thing <laughs> all right really very calm guys okay i'm really, really relaxed now you guys have got me all now relaxed. Chud feels better now. Chud feels Muta, better. Mutahar, you lying fucking scumbag. What is your fucking problem, dude? Why did you throw me under the bus with some dude that's got fucking lolly in his videos? What is your fucking problem? Uh, hello? <laughs> <laughs> that's the part that Pez was talking about. That's really fucking good. So yeah, go follow, uh, or go check out Critical Shogun if you want some good, like, stuff. He, he clips fucking, uh, Chud all the fucking